going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast. And today, we have a really special guest in the building. Listen, we have one of Canada's sound killers in the building. Listen, you've seen him on big stages, medium stages, small stages, and right across. You've seen him on World Class. You've seen him on Rumble. You've seen him on Black Melody. You've seen him on Studio Mix. You've seen him on Twin Star, African Star, a whole heap of sounds. You know what we have in the building today? We have Junior D in the building today. What's going on, my brother? Yeah, well, go ahead. Thank you. We're good. We're good. We're good. Thank you so very much for coming through the podcast it's today. It's an honor. Well, All right. You don't, you don't really bring uh, <laughs> people on here if they don't have something to say. So, uh, Well, listen, your name Great. comes up all the time when in conversation, especially when it comes to the sound world. So I definitely said, you know what? Let me sit down and talk to my brother, Junior D, and see what's going on. I know how it goes. All right, so on this program, we like to bring it right from beginning and then bring it right up to 2021. All right. First question for you is this. Where did you grow up and what interested you in sound business in the first place or even music? Uh, music from I was a youth, from I was a baby. I grew around it. I grew mm-hmm. into music. Like for my dad, he had sound in his house. Like as a, as a youth. Mm-hmm. You want to shut Junior up, you give him a stack of 45s, you put him in front of a turntable, yeah. and he's he's out of your way for the rest of the yeah. day. Like, so music was just one of those things, like, you know, school, played a few instruments, stuff okay. like that. So it's like, you know, I can read music and stuff like that. Like, like music, music. Yeah. So it was always, I haven't done it in a while, but mm-hmm. it's just, like I said, it's just one of those things, like, it was always there. So. What instruments did you actually play? <sighs> Trumpet. Uh, piano, and my dad had a drum set in the house, so that was just one of those natural things. It was funny, like, I took, I played trumpet from probably grade 7 till grade 11, then grade 11, they had too many trumpet players and no no percussionists, so I was like, all right, I Mm -hmm. can do that, so. I had no clue you knew how to play an instrument, several instruments at that. It's um, one of those things. <laughs> how has that helped you in your sound journey so far, actually, no, or, or has it helped you in the journey of knowing to play an oh, instrument? definitely, because, you know, I spend a lot of time doing, like, a lot of studio work. That's, like, one thing that a lot of people probably don't know is, like, mm-hmm. my time on these sounds. Mm-hmm. If the sound was in my hands, for the most part, I was Mm -hmm. the one that was doing all the engineering. If there was a song to be mixed down, that was me. Mm -hmm. If there was a rhythm to be chosen, if a song was to be remixed, that was all me. I was doing that. So a lot of what the final product, what you guys were actually hearing, was, you know, a manifestation of my imagination. Okay. All right. So then let's even get, go down that path now. Because as I said at the beginning, you played several songs. You know what I mean? So I really want to get into your journey and see how you even got here to where you are right now. What was the first big song that you actually started to play? First set of dub plate that ever reached my hand was a song named Casino. Okay. And I was like teenage days, like 16, 17, 18-ish. Mm-hmm. I had a song named Casino from Brampton, Big Old Father Cass. And how was it run on that song there? Basement parties, I was still in yeah. school. Yeah, I mean, like, Mm -hmm. you know, the basement scene was still on Smash. We actually were one of those ones we, you know, made a little bit of noise. So we got certain calls. I remember the first time I came home from my after school job and my mom's like, some grizzly vice man named named (laughs) Alan Lad called the house looking for you. (laughs) (laughs) We got Father Lad. Lad was the first dude from, that was a mainstream sound a main sound that linked me as a youth and say oh forward yeah so big up lad every time and how long did that situation last for in casino uh oh i'll say two three years maybe two three years all right that that's beginning you're just learning it figuring it out it's just one of those it was just something to do like you know what i mean like love the music and just you know Mm -hmm. had the freedom to go out and party and so make it happen from there what was the next move after casino uh black melody this is where the ball really starts to roll for a junior d yes you understand what was your journey like getting to black melody he's seen us from from casino Mm -hmm. 
yeah, and he actually, he actually, we met in front of it was a barber shop, big mm-hmm. Paul Nations barber shop in Brampton, mm-hmm. and he basically seen he seen us a couple of weeks prior at uh, Joe Banana, <laughs> and that was a that was a dance with uh we were the young sound, we were the special guest sound, but mm-hmm. there was a heat wave. There was a step of choice mm-hmm. with Badman Bojo. Yeah. There was an upsetter with Nikos. And Black Melody was also on the dance. Mm-hmm. So he seen us that night and we were we were stepping them times. And he approached me maybe a week or two later. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yo, he wants some stuff. Like and I said to him, I said, if I followed, I'm bringing these youths with me. Who did you bring to Black Melody? A uh, youth named Tombstone, a youth yeah. named Shati, and the mm-hmm. um, one and only Prophet. From okay. Superfresh. Yeah. So, because known, known him for a very long time. Yeah. So. Because I know with Black Melody, Black Melody was one of those songs. Whenever you see Black Melody come around, it was like, it seemed like 20 people around Entourage. the song. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Two three, yeah. two, three, four carloads every time, just to get everybody there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And who was on Black Melody when you guys got there? Nobody was Scooter. Like he had he had his crew, but who was playing the song? No, yeah. nobody else was playing the song with him. Maybe mm-hmm. his brother mm-hmm. here and there, but but as for actual selectors on the song, he didn't really have nobody. Didn't really. Yeah. What were some of your first do you remember your first night on Black Melody? Because remember, this is oh, now a step yeah. up from casino was nice and cool, but now this is a step up to now the the semi big leagues more official the right the first now. dance was a place called Peggy's One Stop mm. and on the dance you had a song named Small Axe mm-hmm. uh, there was a couple other songs but the other song that stuck out that I remember and he came to the dance and he had his dub plates and you know the little silver attache that you used to yes. the silver <laughs> suitcase them yeah big up New Balance Rebel Tone was on that dance yeah and we were on it. And uh, I remember um, when we were done playing, you know, mm-hmm. we did our thing. And <laughs> the following day, we get to find out that reaction, black reaction was in the dance. Uh, one of them must have called school and said, yo, yeah. black melody two, better than black melody one. We're like, oh. <laughs> so that was, that was the first dance. That yeah. was the first dance for black melody. Like, like we used to do a thing there so. get warming up there still all right so then this was did you actually get into any clashes while on black melody yeah uh <laughs> <laughs> all right um uh like you have to remember dance was a little bit different them time there so you used to it used to be like juggling dance where you know go left yeah so i had a few of those and then there was a dance with us mellow vibes rebel tone that was that was at Charms. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, newbie when that dance there. Newbie when that mm-hmm. <laughs> newbie when that dance. He he carded the hell out of the mellow vibes that night. But yeah, yeah. That, that was yeah. It was funny. <laughs> it was funny. He he. Uh, Cause them time we used to wear tags on the clothes. Yes, you remember that style yes, there. Yes, yes. So so you know newbies playing and I think it was Scully walk past him and see the tag and like right away. Newbie draws Harry Tadler. Not for them, a clothes bad boy. Close to that, I was like, <sighs> <laughs> like yeah. if I could say dead pants, but yeah, you know, say so only take one song to end a night. You like, understand that? That was that was the song that ended the night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, was, Crazy. So this yeah. was your first, your first forte into sound clashing and stuff. Oh, and I, figuring was, it I, was, out. I was clashing from casino. Like, from casino. Oh back. hell yeah! Yeah, yeah, I was. Terrorists. We were we were we were known terrorists. Like mm-hmm. and that's part probably part of the reason why you don't, <laughs> you don't even see me juggle with certain people now. Okay. Like, I'm the, I'm known as that guy. I will I will fire a shot after you in a yeah. juggling dance. And it's common common knowledge. Mm-hmm. I don't hide and talk. That that's the era I grow in. You know what I mean? So yeah. you know, big up every sound. Yeah, you know I mean I have nothing against nobody, it's just the competitive nature of the game. If we're on a, a, a dance, yeah. yeah. If I don't get to see you ed- anywhere else, yeah, I'm going to fire a shot yeah. off of you. If you like it, defend it. <laughs> that's that's the business. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, anything so. is possible, especially that. Who are you, even before we even go deep into Black Melody here, 
Select us our songs. Who was your sound or your selector back then that you actually looked up to and said you like their style of playing or how they juggle or clash? Black reaction. Yeah. Without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Kamal is a freaking beast. Yeah. He's a beast. Mm-hmm. He's a selector selector. If you, if, you, if, you, if you live in Toronto and you never studied that, you, at some point, that, mm-hmm. you're not good. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we didn't even reach blacks. It's like mm-hmm. charismatic. Probably one of the best MCs in the city. And those guys can do both. Mm-hmm. You know, I know enough people custom say they don't clash. They, I, I get it. I get why they don't. They don't, yeah. you know, call them. I'm sure they'll, they'll mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, if it's right, yeah. they will. But yeah, they, they don't need to. Black Racks was a song. Good. Any other town songs, who are you looking at and say, okay, you know what? This song is bad. This selector, this MC is wicked. Uh, I was always a bass Odyssey fan. Yeah. I was always a Bass Odyssey fan. I was a Jaro fan. Which version of Bass Odyssey? Are we talking the pre-Squingy or the after-Squingy? I was listening to Bass Odyssey from probably 92, 93. Yeah. So I caught the last, like, the Tinawan era. Then I caught the, the Glamour G and Lenny, Lenny. era, the, mm-hmm. the Mark and Squingy era. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was always a Bass Odyssey fan. Mm-hmm. Like, it didn't matter who. So I was vexed when I these kill them cows yeah. like yo <laughs> <laughs> how sweet yeah. <laughs> right? you know what I mean? and it wasn't just a regular beating mm-hmm. so I was like yeah yeah, yeah I mean and like and I these two I these bad sound too mm-hmm. so. alright okay so you're looking at black reaction you're looking at bass artists. so clearly you like that juggling mixy clean cut type of not too raw but gets the point across well, it's kind of my style too I like mm-hmm. that I like it. anybody who actually pays attention you'll know that I will tend to kind of juggle mm-hmm. while clashing. I, I don't mind sitting on a rhythm and peeling off a 10 to 15 piece. It will, yeah. it, those 10 to 15 songs are going to fly by so quick uh, at least half of them are going to connect. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't have to make an a, a argument for every single song, but mm-hmm. if you have the right set of song and the right rhythm and you're juggling, you'll maintain your vibe and then, you know, your finger speech, catch your forward, finger yeah. speech, catch your forward. Everybody it's, have a different format. It's, it's a format. It's a technique. And that's what a lot of people don't understand, especially right now. I think everybody thinks, okay, I bought seven dubs. I'm now a song and I'm just going to go <laughs> scream and kill somebody. And, no, and I, no, that. no. There's a lot of psychs to it, man. You, gotta, you have to know your opponent. Mm-hmm. You have to know your opponent. You can't just run in and, yeah. you know what I mean? All right. On Black Melody here, what's your first big night? Say, okay, on the big stage with Black Melody. I think we did some juggle for your life competition at Epiphany. Okay. Got eliminated in the finals for a playback. I think that's probably the one time I've ever done a playback. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I got I a throw, question for that. I'm going to remember that, that later, yeah. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. yeah. But um, we did a couple juggling competition, did a couple 45 mm-hmm. clash. Like, it was just one of those things, like, like dance them time there. Yeah, if we catch you on a dance, like, I'll fire some shot and, mm-hmm. and keep it moving. Did you guys ever get to the fully loaded stage on Black Melody? When Ron did the first fully loaded, yeah, uh, I think it was oh two, mm-hmm. two thousand two, and that was the night where he had everybody play a half hour round. That was the first, 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 right? Mm-hmm. Um, we were scheduled to play the second half hour behind Rosa. Rosa was the opening song. Yeah. And due to whatever was going on at the time, the dubs were not in Canada. Yeah. The dubs were not in Canada. So me and Baba at the time, we were there, and that was kind of like the last straw for us because we wanted that stage. Mm -hmm. We wanted that stage. And it was actually not long after that, after we missed that, that Mm -hmm. was kind of like, okay, yeah. You're ready. So it was like, okay, so we have Casino, then Black Melody, but we see, okay, clearly why you started to shift from Black Melody. Where did you go after Black Melody? Studio Mix. Studio Mix. Okay, this to me is where the name Junior D really became mature right here, was on Studio Mix. You understand? What was it like going from a Black Melody to a Studio Mix? What was that like? Well... The transition, it was kind of like juggling to clash because with Black Melody, we were juggling everywhere. We were yeah. doing we were doing reggae room. Uh, at the time, I think I was doing Friday nights at Epiphany with Kamal and Chief. Okay. 
So I was juggling, juggling, juggling. Mm-hmm. I was getting bored with the juggling. <laughs> <laughs> I could, when when we when it was Black Melody, we juggled every week. Yeah, we juggled. The only songs that were playing more than us were the the reactions and the militaries and like those dudes mm-hmm. were the only ones. We were nipping at people's tails. We were in the you know we were yeah. in the east because you used to see me in the east as a youth. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, I mean like we we were out there. Outside, as they that's it. Mm-hmm. Outside before outside was that thing. <laughs> so, like, we, I was already juggling, and yeah. then um, we we parted ways, mm-hmm. and then um, ended up with Studio Mix, and I was still doing, I was still doing Epiphany on Fridays. Mm-hmm. Then we were doing like Landmark on Mondays. Yeah. They rebooted the Monday night. The original Monday night was starting from scratch, and then when they rebooted it, it was us and Top, and then they bring in Scratch for long weekends and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. like I was always juggling, mm-hmm. and a lot of people forget that I was juggling. So when I got Studio Mix, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, he clashes too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, that's yeah. that. That's what. Like I never used to MC on Black Melody. Okay. It's when you got to studio mixes when you decided to. And when you got to studio mix, who was on studio mix, Nobody. if anybody? The sound was, was parked. It was parked. Parked. Because in his, in his ba- it was in Marv Brown's basement, yeah. parked. They were using the dub plates as coasters. When I cleaned the dubs, <laughs> I was cleaning off cup marks off of dub plates. The sound was parked. Yeah. Big up studio mix. Mm-hmm. I Nothing negative to say about the sound. Just big them up, but the sound was parked when yeah. I got it. Do you remember, because the funny thing, now that you say, the funny thing, do you remember the clash with Black Melody and Studio Mix? I was standing up behind Studio Mix sound. If, if anybody ever find the video yeah. and watch the video, they had two sounds strung up on opposite sides of Joe Banana. Mm-hmm. And if you look behind Studio Mix while they're playing, you're going to see a youth standing up on the table yeah. holding a mask. That was me the whole night. When I looked down, Studio Mix dubs them were by my foot. Yeah. Because I was standing on the table that they were, they were using. Were you playing Black Melody at this time or this was before I was, I was, I was Black playing Melody. Casino still. Okay, so this... I was, okay. barely, I was barely legal to get yeah. to Joe Banana that night. <laughs> so you're there with Studio... Because I'm saying, because that was a big, big thing in the city, the Black Melody and Studio Mix there. Okay, so then now you got to Studio Mix. Nobody was on Studio Mix when you got there. Okay. Who did you bring to Studio Mix when you got to Studio Mix then? Um... It was me and Baba, big up Baba. Mm-hmm. We were it was me and him that was parting because mm-hmm. he he came to Black Melody. I think I'm pretty sure I brought him there too. Okay, he came to Black Melody from Outcast. A lot yeah. of people don't even know he used to play Outcast. So yeah, <laughs> I brought I brought him on, and then me and him we we did dirt with yeah. Studio Mix. Okay, before he, he's what? he's yeah. actually he's actually the one who who facilitated us even getting the song. Okay, so. Because you guys were in transition after you left Black Melody, or no? You we just when went, we, we wow. left Black Melody and juggling dates were still running at mm-hmm. the time, so we we were just playing. We never had a name or anything like that, and it was just one of those things. And mm-hmm. opportunity presented itself. It's like, mm-hmm. why not? Why? But why Studio Mix? Especially as something that you know, okay, yeah, Studio Mix they did damage in the past, but then they were actually parked up. As you at said, the time, they had only been parked up for a few years. Okay, it had only been maybe three, four years. So okay. it's, it wasn't parked that long. Yeah, but it had definitely been put down, and nobody mm-hmm. was definitely nobody was doing nothing with it at the time. And what were some of your first, you guys, some of your first moves when you got to Studio Mix to say, okay, this is the direction or this is what we're trying to do with the song? We're doing both. Mm-hmm. We were juggling and we had our weekly things. We were doing Matrix um, on Wednesdays. I, we, mm-hmm. I, I juggled. People didn't yeah. realize that I was getting juggling. We were Brampton dudes. Yeah. So there wasn't much that went on in Brampton that we weren't included in. Big up Father Veda. Mm-hmm. Yes. Space yeah, Invader. Yes, yes, yes. Like, there's no dance, no keep mm-hmm. a Brampton. And he's like, yo, I'm going to bring no music come. Yeah. And when he're, when he's bringing us to dance, he's not telling us to play early while. Well. He's giving us start time because mm-hmm. he knew, say, we knew what we were doing. So when you have the elder in the city endorsing you that way, mm-hmm. it was just, you know what I mean? So, Good like that. Yeah, man. So big, big up Space up, Invader. Yeah, yeah, Veda, yeah, really, I did sure. real done. And Ian Mixmaster. And yes. Like, those are dudes that, I grew amongst mm-hmm. like that's why I can play with 
those crowds because mm-hmm. those are the guys that I grew up watching and seeing yeah. them like the digital. I caught the tail end of digital. Yes, yeah. I caught like the last maybe two, three years of digital. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, so. and the thing with Brampton and those songs, it was like a completely different world out there. Definitely, it was like if you're not from Brampton or in that region, there you have no clue what's going on. But Brampton <laughs> is popping every oh, Friday, Friday, probably th- from Thursday, 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 <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Brampton was always there was always something <laughs> yeah. somewhere going mm-hmm. on. There was always something somewhere going on. So. Wow, um, you got the big heavy song here, Studio Mix. Now, what was your first clash date? On studio mix. First official clash would have been 2003, fully loaded, night one or two. That was the first one. That was the first official clash. That was the first, yeah. Yeah. Walk us through that night there. <laughs> oh boy. Um, so we'd had the sound for about a year. Mm-hmm. And we're juggling. We're getting paid. We put our money down. Mm-hmm. Fully loaded came around. We're like, Sure, why not? Mm-hmm. Took our little something when we had, and we went, we cut like a two plate and put that and put mm-hmm. that with what we had, and we went to war. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that night was, uh, oh, man, who was on the dance? There was, uh, there was a young Lumba G. Yes. He was playing uh, Soul Vibes, I think, them time there. Oh, there he was, wasn't on Step of those times. No, he wasn't on Step of them time there. That was the beginning. That was the first time me and him buck up. Me and yeah. him buck up a few times. Yeah. We'll get to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that was the first time he didn't book up for True True. Mm-hmm. Um, White Boy was on it. Mm-hmm. Um, Rootsman was on it. Um, Ninja, Turbo, Sonic. Sonic. Yes, yes. He was on it. He was on it. And a couple other songs that I can't remember. But those were, I know, I remember those were the main, the heavy dudes on that dance. Mm-hmm. So that was the, the Now Watch No Clock. That night there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. And at that time there, this was the one that was at Milvan and Finch? Finch and Milvan, yes. Yes, yes, yes okay. Yes, yes. So basically, if anybody knows, it's basically, give or take, Rootsman's backyard. Yeah, you know, Finch that, man. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Rootsman played after me. Mm-hmm. That No. It played before me mm-hmm. that night. Like, it's fully loaded, so you know there's, there's you know, mm-hmm. bag of sound, but we played back to back. Mm-hmm. They played before us that night. And what was the game plan going in? Who did you say, this is who we need to get rid of? Turbo Sonic. Yeah. Because at them and Studio Mix did have the rivalry. The Malton-Brampton rivalry. Outsider. Like like, like you said, if you didn't live down there, you never wouldn't know, say, that I go on. So no. Turbo Sonic was, was one of those people, because I knew, say, him and Scatter them, they, they're just, anytime they buck up, a yeah. war. So I, I went in with Turbo Sonic on, mm-hmm. on, my, on my radar. I didn't even really know mm-hmm. about Rootsman them time there. They were they were young, mm-hmm. like they were young them time there. I didn't know about them them time. So, so it was more Turbo Sonic was the I one. I knew Turbo Sonic. Yeah, I knew Turbo Sonic. You know what I mean? So I knew Soul Vibes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, so. but them was on that night there yeah. too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay, and then what happened? What do you remember happening that dancer? One of your own. There was yeah. no there was no dub for dub. <laughs> I don't want to I don't worry what we say. That there they the dance it wasn't close. Yeah. It wasn't close. Mm-hmm. It was they they were fighting for second and third place all night. So okay, so you won that fully loaded there. As hands down, hands down. Yeah. Who did it come down to? White boy, soul vibes, studio mix, I think were the last three sounds standing. Mm-hmm. And there was no tune for tune that night. No tune for tune that night. First big clash on studio mix, you guys took the trophy. Trophy. Home. Okay. Was that the last night or that was now you had to go to the finals? I qualified for the for the finals. Mm-hmm. That that year was uh I think that was the first year Black Reaction won. That was the night when Tasha was beating the hell out of everybody. Yes. And then came and played and back, played the back the song. a song and got yes, eliminated. Yes, if she yes. never played back the song, everybody did that night mm-hmm. because yes. she was on point that night. Mm-hmm. So we got Tasha. Okay, so you guys qualified and went to that fully loaded. Went to that fully loaded. Went to that night and we got eliminated for playing back a song oh. on the same rhythm. They told us we played back a bunty. I remember yeah. specifically. They told us that we played back a bunty. And I was like, same rhythm, different song. Mm-hmm. That was that, that I think that was part of the reason that McRun 
um, start make man write down every song for mm-hmm. Fully Low because I cussed him stink that night. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, fuck, mm, you know, living the, we never play, we play back a song on the same rhythm. Mm-hmm. You heard Bunty and the Stagalog. Yes. Mm-hmm. Different song. <laughs> so, That's why. So, yeah, we, we came out and we are like, all right, whatever. Yeah. And you guys got eliminated early or yeah, later? From, oh, I don't even remember. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure, yeah, pretty early. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you yeah. guys, you guys won one. You guys lost one. Okay, cool. No, oh, that's a, you win some, you lose some. You have a lot of guys afraid to say they lose mm-hmm. clash. Like everybody lose clash. There Have is no, there is no undefeated son in the city. I don't care who them be and who are, be, and who, are who are vexed when me say that. Yeah. There's no nobody not undefeated in Toronto. Mm-hmm. A lot of those beatings just never got recorded. Yeah, <laughs> everybody get brushed. Yeah. Hear that. So you guys got the big bad studio mix now. What was the next moves after that? No, you guys you guys started to okay, get your feet wet and started to understand um, how studio mix works. So we were, we were juggling. Mm-hmm. We were juggling them time zone one open. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people would probably okay, so this dance kind of set a whole heap of things in motion. Okay. A lot of people would probably, there was no audio recorded, so they're not going to know. If you weren't there, you're not going to know that Black Cat and Rebel Tone clash at Zone 1 right after Newbie 1 World Clash. If you weren't there, you're yeah. not going to know. It happened. It was brutal. <laughs> but we were playing early warm yeah. for that dance. We got asked to do early warm for that dance. Mm-hmm. So um, we go there and <laughs> them time the Rebel Tone hot. Mm-hmm. So he took a double booking. Uh, he was playing Steenie's birthday mm-hmm. the same night. I'll never forget it. He was playing Steenie's birthday. So he, he went to go mash that mm-hmm. works. He said, Clash can't wait. Mm-hmm. Typical newbie. <laughs> God bless him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, new, so newbie fight. So we're at the dance and I see like 11.30, 12 o'clock, 12.30, no newbie. Mm-hmm. I see Panta oh. in the corner. So I'm like, yo, Tanka, come make the people them know say there. So he comes up now. Who told me to do that? He comes in and he goes, Daro Daniam, wait upon him. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Panta yeah. dropped 10 song and cuts. Mm. <sighs> I'm like, all right, cool. So now the dance, so wake up now. So I'm like, all right, can't go back to no early one. So I was like, let me just kick out every hot 45 we we'll leave. Mm-hmm. By the time I do that, nobody's got to reach. So said, so done. So, mm. Then I get rid of 45, them nice. Bop, 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 bop. He walks in, I see him walking, I'm like, oh, you're rich. All right, here we are. May I play four more songs? Mm-hmm. So now, remember I said earlier something, you got to know your, know people, know their songs. Mm-hmm. And I knew that these four songs I was about to play, I was going to play four dubs. Yeah. And, I, and I already know, I listened to every black cat cat said, he ain't playing these songs. Yeah. Rebel Tone. He ain't playing these songs. So I wheel off four bone tip on the sick. Wap, 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 wap. Lift up the dance. I'm like, clash start. No. Mm-hmm. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? So that happened. And then a um, little bit later, we got linked. So we got linked for another juggle. We got linked for another early warm. Okay. So this is going to be one of those stories that's probably going to piss off some people. So we got linked for another early one. This dance was supposed to be Rootsman, mm-hmm. King Klepto, Kilimanjaro. Okay. The original flyer come out. Those are the three songs that were on the dance. Mm-hmm. We get they call us. They're like, you know, they seen us do the early one for the other one. So they link us. Hey, mm-hmm. forward and do the early one again. Cool, no problem. Pick up my 45 then, pick up my dub box, go at the dance, reach the dance. Yeah. They start handing out paper with rules, rounds, and I'm like, so, it, you know, them time we're still kind of youngish and, you know, foolish pride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, ka, ka, right now I know that if I don't play, oh, I'm run. So I'm like, all right, cool. No problem. So we took part. Mm-hmm. You know, the video came out. Our logo was on the video. Our, our logo wasn't on the flyer. Just so, mm-hmm. oh no, no. So we played the first round, and this was the first time that I ever got dropped out by, you know, that, that kind of man in the corner. Right. <laughs> Zone one, yes, we do. Right. So that, that little one kind of people mm-hmm. dropped me out right away. And it was funny because I'll never, I'll never forget. Mm-hmm. Um, the Jaro that was here it was genius and hype. Yes. 
Yes. This was in between the Trooper and Freddie mm-hmm. era. So um, I remember they dropped us out. And Hype turns to me. He's like, yo, how them drop you out? And he play better than, pl- than Pali. So, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. So like I said, all of these things mm-hmm. set things into motion because I came off of the stage and I mm. went over into the corner where the rest of the man them were Father Mix and the whole of the crew them and Father Mix looks at me and he's like no even watch that mm-hmm. he said that'll never happen to you again and it was at that moment mm-hmm. when Studio Mix started pre- prepping for that 2005 run the fully loaded where we kind of steamroll everything yeah. I went, it was at mm-hmm. that exact moment because the following day mm-hmm. Carl Mick and Chun start rolling so they seen that you were ready to say okay because you know, I because cool. up until that point whatever songs had been viced was stuff that I had saved up my own money I went out and cut a one two one two uh, when we won the 2003 mm-hmm. them time there was still a plate plate so yeah for remember yes and there was only a one week in between mm-hmm. the two dance them mm-hmm. so we won the qualifying night and mm-hmm. then I got two plates for the final night so I'm gonna get a couple new killer and couple of, you know I got that yeah. eight song yeah. you know when you say two plates I eight song so I'm gonna get eight song feet and you know what I mean and that was all I had for the whole year you know it, it wasn't what it was we were just juggling like we weren't taking no big clash but you True. see once that happened mm-hmm. it's like oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> alright cool I would yeah. just start everything mm-hmm. anything everything in sight big up culture um, mm-hmm. Gideon. he played an integral role in that too car. Yeah. He had my he had some people on the ground that was cutting like so when we reached fully loaded 05 mm-hmm. it was it was pretty much lights out for everything there so who was the first one to really start feeling this studio mixes box at that time there with that vengeance say okay you guys want to play around let's go <laughs> i remember there was a there was a i think it was like a monday night around a zone one mm-hmm. My name used to go play some dominoes and whatever. And I forget where it started, but there was somewhere where it would have been me, Super Fresh, them, Black Reaction, them. And the argument was, who have the best set of song on the sick? <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up like, yo, me see on a zone on the more. Yeah. And, you know, and we just, you know, we're doing like them, them type of vibes there. Mm-hmm. You're just scrimmage. Not now going, we just did a beat song song. Mm-hmm. And there were a couple different nights like that. I remember there was uh, there was another night when it was it was getting closer to fully loaded, mm-hmm. and um, had some songs on CD, some songs on plate, because I didn't press off everything mm-hmm. at the time because I was I was in no rush, but still had the song. And somebody said so. I don't even remember who said something that night, yeah. but that night I remember I dropped um, Cartel God Session. Me and you have argued about that song, but I had that song <laughs> lot. <laughs> I dropped I dropped drop right. gun set I dropped gun session mm-hmm. off a CD that night. Whoever was sitting down stood the fuck up. Yeah. The pan the sling thing, pan the lodge. Mm-hmm. I remember when I dropped the first time I dropped that, even that was months before fully loaded. Yeah. And anybody who was sitting down in zone one got up that night and everybody was like, and then I think I dropped a baby sham back at it. And then I got a next foul and I was like, yo, I'll see you guys are fully loaded. Cut. <laughs> and what happened now when you got to fully loaded? Do you remember who was in fully loaded that night? <sighs> the last, <laughs> Starcade. I remember Starcade because yeah. me and them were, it was me and them the whole night. Yeah. It was me and them the whole night. There was a, oh man, I can't even remember. Mm-hmm. I know SNJ Fire Squad, mm-hmm. they were on it. Um, I'm drawing a blank. There this was, so many, the, so this many was the Friday night in Zone 1. This wasn't the... It was a qualifying guys, night. It was yes, a qualifying night. Trying to make it Th- tonight. This three, particular yes. year, Ron was taking the two zones. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the winner and the runner up from the mm-hmm. qualifying night was, was qualifying to the finals yeah. that year. Funny thing with it, I see that flyer in my mind right I now. See, it's yeah, an orange, I see, yeah, like, I can't it's remember. It had s- all the songs yes. going around in the circuit. Yeah, there was, was a Oakland lot of. Was those guys on that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there was one or two older town songs. I like, mm-hmm. just. Oh. It, you know what it was? That night wasn't the 
usual suspects mm. that you would that's why it's kind of hard to remember everybody that was in there because it was it was probably like website mm. and those type of website songs. was yes, on it guys. yes mm-hmm. yes um the, the way you play the song mm-hmm. he came up i can't remember his name right now i'm yeah. I've, I've drawing a blank complete mm-hmm. blank on it but yeah yeah that night was um starcade was was going heavy with the budget them then we were going heavy with the bunty them mm-hmm. and then um at that point, we had actually we gotten a little ahead of ourselves. We advised mm-hmm. Abunti mm-hmm. and Bujo, Combo. And going into the dance, we said, leave that for the final night. Yeah. We got this. We got this. So now the dance is going and Starcade, I go Bujo, Bujo, Bujo. We mm-hmm. go Bunti, Bunti, Bunti. See when we reach fourth round, mm-hmm. I clap them with the Bujo, Bunti. <laughs> 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 so I clapped them yeah. with the buju now. They came back for their last, like they played their last round and they emptied out every buju they had in their box. Yeah. But that was enough to get tune for tune. Mm-hmm. And then we got to tune for tune. And I used Bunty and wiped them out and dumped it up. They're trying to play like John Holt and yeah. this, that, and the other. No, I'm like, no, Bunty. Yeah. You, mercy. <laughs> You're sticking to listen. Uh, no, this is I, what I know uh, one all <laughs> night. I'm sticking, even though it's not traditional dub for dub. Because it was, what, what it was one of those things where, where was, because we had been, you know, they were playing Buju. So I mm-hmm. said, yes, say Buju, yes, say Buju are your DJ. I mm-hmm. said, who's studio mixed DJ? And everybody in the crowd's like, Bunty. Yeah. So, so I was like, okay. <laughs> so, so, so what had happened? Who did so it came down to you and Studio Mix Advance or you and um Starcade? Us and Starcade Max? We adv- yeah, we advanced mm-hmm. to the finals that night. Mm-hmm. And then uh we made it to we took second place on the last night. On the last night? Yeah. Re- so we basically we 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 Okay, so my my personal grievance, Ron. Yeah. Ron, this is my personal grievance. Mm-hmm. When they did the voting for Starcade. Mm-hmm. They did a two, three votes. Couldn't decide who won the night. They're like, all right, tune for tune. Mm-hmm. When it got down to the final night, it's me and Reaction. They did two, three vote. Gave it to Reaction. I was like, so why not do, why not do dub for dub? <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Yeah. I never bawled publicly about that ever. Yeah. This is probably the first time anybody's ever heard me make mention of it. But do remember, they did vote multiple times and there was no dub for dub. But they did dub for dub. The week before for yeah. the same set of voting. Just saying. <laughs> okay, so then now you guys are definitely serious now because now Studio Mix came second in the big night now. Mm-hmm. Because remember, these are no joke songs now. Now is oh everybody, everybody, every, every everybody, everybody was on there. Super fresh black reaction. Like the who's who. Yeah. Only song that wasn't on it was Turbo that particular year. Yeah. yeah okay. So. Big, big, big. And then what give me two more nights you remember. On Studio Mix that you'll never forget. Either something where you won or you even lost and you deserve to lose that you never forget before we get to your next song. Black Cat. Yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so after Fully Loaded, Fully Loaded keep October. So, you know, the crew said, you know, let's strike while the iron's hot. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's, let's clutch somebody. Mm-hmm. We reached out to the defending champs. Mm-hmm. They said no. Mm-hmm. We reached out to the young sound that was making waves at the time. Mm-hmm. We had crossed paths a few months earlier, and I got dropped out to the dance. I thought it was kind of unfair, so I was like, all right, let's, let's ask them for a one-on-one and see okay. if that would go and... I don't remember who reached out to who, but Rootsman also turned down that dance as well. Okay, so then now it's Black Reaction turned it down. First. Reaction turned then it Rootsman. down, then Rootsman turned it down. They okay. were the two hottest songs in the city at the time. Ra- mm-hmm. Rootsman, had, uh, they were doing their thing. They had clashed Jaro, they had clashed Black Cat. Like they were the hot song. Mm-hmm. Give the cre- give credit where it's due. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Reaction had one fully loaded. And, you know, we had asked. They said no, so we're like, all right. If they don't want to do it, we'll bring in somebody on our own and we link Black Cat. Mm. Them time the Pantad won five world clash them time there. So he was in his prime. He was yeah. in his prime. 
and we brought him to Toronto. I'll never forget because um, he was coming to Toronto regular them times. So mm-hmm. he followed, brought him down to smoke shop to do the commercial. Big up Smokey. Brought him down there, did the commercial. He got his deposit. Mm-hmm. And he said, when you do the flyer, don't put verses. It's too sound in Ireland. He said, Panta said, don't put verses. Okay, okay cool, no problem. Mm-hmm. That's why the dance was called the mission, the Valentine's Day mission. Wait, it was Valentine's? It was a Valentine's Day massacre. That's what the flyer says. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> So that dance goes, <laughs> Panta reaches back for the dance and mm-hmm. realizes that the streets are talking. Yeah. And he squeezes for a mix for our next money. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the dance. He squeezed him for our next yeah. thing before the dance. And we did a one-on-one. There was no trophy. There was no host. There was no time clock. There yeah. were no rules. I just two sound and I did dance. And last song standing, I think we played six rounds between the two songs and it was one of those things where we fly out win the first two rounds quick no easy so mm-hmm. we're like all right feel nice now and i <laughs> remember after we played the second round we take our dub box if anybody remembers zone one the you have like the back side where the bar yes, was yes so we took our dub box and went to the back and kind of left the rest of the dance up at the front mm-hmm. and by the time we could put the dub box down and open the dub box we hear the dance I'm like, what? <laughs> kind of went and pushed my head around the corner. I see Panta up on the table playing back a song that we had just played two minutes earlier. I'm like, what the hell? So I turn around, I look at Bob. I'm like, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As I got, I'm like, uh-oh. Yeah. And wake up now. Mm-hmm. So he rattled off like three rounds straight. So we won two rounds, then he won three rounds. And it was like our game plan that night was... Wait out the answer with him. Mm-hmm. Wait out the Shine and Chris. Talk out the Dennis Brown. Talk out the Garnet Silk. Talk out the Yami Bolo. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you're a clash man, you know what me I talk about. Yeah, you know I mean? So we, we knew that we had a certain set of song that could match those. Got you. We just got to play ours after him. Mm-hmm. Another thing that we also knew is that as the night goes on, Panta's going to start playing short rounds. Yes. If anybody goes back and listens to the mm-hmm. audio, you're going to hear there's a point where I come back and I tell him, finish your time. Mm-hmm. The first time I did that, <laughs> he squashed me with a... With a, <laughs> with a <laughs> he came and he played the assassin <laughs> all over the yeah. dance. I was like... Mm. Uh. But he did it again. You see, when he did it again, mm-hmm. right, that's what I did. You are ready for him this I was time. ready for him the second yeah. time. So he played short. So I, I, I jumped on and I kind of gave him a taste of his own medicine. So mm-hmm. now me go find my long time bunty them and my long time buju them. And I'm playing those at four o'clock in the morning. And now I'm going wop, 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 wop. Mm-hmm. The dance is going off. A panther's on the stage and he's like, give me the mic. Yeah. So if, once again, if you listen to the audio, you're going to hear me look at him and say, where you big for? Yeah. <laughs> Lick a while ago, you never want to play. Wait. And I start whopping with more song again. Yeah. So that just switched the whole the whole dance just switch back now. Mm-hmm. So now I take back the dance from him. Then it was tune for tune. So we basically we walked in with the momentum mm-hmm. and then it's like uh big up Polly. Polly did early warm for that dance. Then. Okay. He actually filled in for Fire Kid Steeny, who was a no show. Yeah. So he left us be the whole entire night, but once it started to get late, he kind of came in and just kind of did a little hosting thing. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right, so what am I going to do? And then he's like, all right. So Panther's like, all right, you play one, and me, I go play one. So now it's tune for tune. Mm-hmm. like, all right, good to go. Yeah. And I said, and I fuss him on a Dennis Brown. I clap him with a Dennis Brown right out the gate. Mm. And when that happened, it was like, he played, I think it was an Anthony Cruz. Mm-hmm. And then Baba looks at me, he's like, yo, play the Junior Reed. I'm so in half sense. Mm-hmm. And I just made the speech to go in and I said, Panta, yeah, I play dub for dub. You're supposed to know better than that. Mm-hmm. Big up Anthony Cruz, but I know them sang they're supposed to play. And then we played the Junior Reed, so in mm-hmm. half sense, I just selected the way they're behind it. After that, we could do no wrong. It was a complete landslide after that. 
Yami Bolo play, couldn't get a forward to match it back. Garnet Silk play, couldn't play a forward, couldn't catch back the forward. Like, he got his forward, yeah. yeah. But he still never catch back the Dennis Brown forward. He never catch back the Junior Reed forward. Yeah. All no. So. Okay, and there's audio out for that dance? Yes. So you would say studio you, mix You, you, you recorded it. I recorded the <laughs> studio mix and... Black Cat one on one zone one. Yes. It's an orange flyer again too. Yes, uh, I remember that dance. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So you would say you won that dance? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So dope. Yeah. Okay, so then that's another big accomplishment on Studio Mix. Me personally, another time I remember Studio Mix actually up against some giants and doing something good was the tag team clash. Yes. Yeah. Walk us through that clash here. How did that clash even come around with you? And Because we're talking about tag team. Tag team was King Turbo Studio Mix mm-hmm. versus Mighty Krong and King Addy. So you guys were basically Team Ron Nelson mm-hmm. versus Team, team Irish Shin. and Shin. Yeah. yeah. How did that come about? And how did you connect with King Turbo in the first place to go into that clash? Well, the first tag team clash was Black Reaction Super Fresh mm-hmm. versus... Uh, I think it was Mighty Crown and Pison Dot. Florida, Pison Dot. You know, I forgot about that dance. That was the first yeah. one. And Chin won that one. Mm-hmm. Chin's team won that one. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Ron rallied back for the second one and he went for his bread and butter, which was King Turbo. Mm-hmm. And he told King Turbo, pick your partner. Mm-hmm. So that's how I ended up on that dance. Big up slingshot. Okay. What do you remember? What what are some highlights you remember about that class show? It wasn't one of my better nights. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of personal stuff going on at the time. Like personal, personal stuff. Like, like, Mm -hmm. yeah. I shouldn't have even been there. Yeah. Uh, I was on charges. (laughs) So I shouldn't have been there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, I had a lot going on them times. So went through it. You know, I, I, Turbo carried a lot of the weight that night. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Big up jamming. Uh, preparing for that dance was actually pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, Turbo, they would drive to Brampton and we would go around to um, Canadian Speaker Workshop. Big up Shane. Yeah. We used to go around at Shane's shop and Shane would stroke up the sound outside mm-hmm. and we would scrimmage outside and we practiced. A lot of people don't know those first couple of rounds that we played at Tag Team Clash were rehearsed okay. like a dozen times. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, like we practice. Mm-hmm. We we got together and we 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 scrimmage and you know, Jamin wasn't an MC, so it was it was about getting him ready. Yeah, you know what I mean. So we did a lot of that, you know, worked on him connecting with the crowd and stuff like. That. They were looking to me to help him with that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So it, it, you know, I scratched their back, they scratched mine, and we won. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. We won, so. Yeah, that, that night, for sure, Studio Mix, you guys did your thing, yes, but that was more, you that was turbo. That, that turbo. that was, dance was Turbo. Well, yeah, I, and you'll, and never, said, okay, you'll, never, you'll never hear me yeah. say anything else. Mm-hmm. Turbo definitely carried the weight that night. Do you remember one more wicked night on Studio Mix before we get out of the mix? Mm. No, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a few. Uh, mm-hmm. You have to remind me. Oh. Mm-hmm. There, there's so much. Again, I, I, it's like uh, when you go through them, it's like forget the fully loaded, the tag teams, yeah. the um, the black cat, the um, there was a couple of them. Well, how long were you on Studio Mix for? For well, six years, seven years. Okay, so you did a half minute on Studio Mix. Why did you leave Studio Mix? Tag Team Clash was my actual last dance. Before mm-hmm. the dance even happened, I knew that it was going to be my last dance on the mm-hmm. song. Um, why did I leave? It was one of those things where... Um, hmm. They're sore losers. Hmm? They're sore losers. Yeah, okay. Uh, they, they, they were not happy with... Not that they were they weren't happy with my performance. They mm-hmm. didn't like the fact that I was um, giving Turbo as much respect as I did. The night at the night of the clash, there was one trophy. Mm-hmm. I gave the trophy to Jamin. Yeah. At the end of the night, I said, "Yo, your first one is Teki Tango, and I've won a few of these. I, you've never won a clash. Mm-hmm. Go on." And the rest of the crew, they weren't too happy with that. <laughs> and there was also um, 
there was a member on the sound who was kind of getting into the owner's ear and he, he basically told the owner, I can do more with the sound than what Junior is doing. And I got wind of that. Yeah. And when I got wind of that, I was like, yeah, eh? <laughs> so I went ahead and I did Tag Team Clash. And when Tag Team Clash was done, mm -hmm. they almost tried to demote me for this guy. And I was like, nah, peace. He said he can do more than me. Yeah. It's all yours, bro. And I left. Wow. So, because this, this is a hot minute on Studio Mix here. So then what was your next move after Studio Mix now? Because remember, we did the Black Melody as a bigger song. Now you're on the Studio Mix. So which was the next song you went to at this time here? It would have been Twin Star. Twin Star. How did Twin Star come into the play? Because if you don't, a lot of people don't realize, or if you're not even from Toronto, I don't think Twin Star is a, originally came from Toronto. They're not. Okay, and it was just a song. Where did this sound come up from? It was just come from one Jamaica. It come from Jamaica. Yeah. It's from Linstead. Mm -hmm. It's a juggling sound. It's a like a jiggy party sound from Jamaica. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, they used to do like um, Dirty Fridays and um, Bunty Sundays. Like they used to string up for those party regular, regular mm -hmm. in Jamaica and stuff like that. So big up on Ruli. You know, um, I forget. I think we met at a barbecue somewhere, mm -hmm. and just got the talking or whatever mm -hmm. and yeah the twin star was was a good thing like he 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 gave me that sound like it, you have to remember that even the smallest sound from jamaica mm -hmm. build different from a guy up here in toronto who's doing their hustling and th you can't you can't beat when a sound's in jamaica playing mm -hmm. and the artists them see the sound every single week playing on the hottest party in right. the on the island they want their song to be played. So mm -hmm. they're going to come and they're going to be like, here, here, hold that. And I don't play them again. Here, yeah. hold that. Here, hold that. So he he was, you know, yeah, he's cutting his songs in, but he was getting a lot of songs like that mm -hmm. too. So by the time I get the song now, I have this whole catalog of juggling song, songs mm -hmm. that I could juggle with any song anywhere. But uh, he also had the splits. So... Um, I got the first batch of splits from him mm -hmm. and I just took them because I was already remixing songs from Studio Mix. So I, I, I already had a grasp of that. Big up mm -hmm. Smoke Shop again. Yeah. I, he's the, the genius behind all of that. Like we used to mash enough works. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I remember I took a, I think I took like maybe four or five Movado. He had one, the Red Bull and Guineas and I mm -hmm. took them and I went and put them on another rhythm. So one day now I'm, you know, just regular link up mm -hmm. at his house and the day I beat some song I plug in my laptop and I, I slap him with the song Them he's like where them come from? Mm -hmm. Are you do that? I'm like yeah you see from the from the second he realized that I was able to do that he took every split song he got he's like here you go <laughs> and he, so I was actually able to take Twin Star mm -hmm. strip it all the way down and build it all the way back up Right up the to way the way I, how you figure yeah, it. To how I, how I wanted it. Okay, that, that so was, then. That's, that was how I got to do that. What was the break? Was there a break between Twin Star and Studio Mix or it was basically right into uh, it? Maybe a couple months. Yeah. A couple months. Just like, listen, man. A lot of people are going to be, oh, I jump from zone to zone. Don't worry. <laughs> we will, don't worry. We will get there. There's always we a reason. There. There's always yeah. a reason. There's always a reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's always a reason. So, yeah, uh, there was a couple months break, but. Mm -hmm. There's that itch, you know what I mean? I, me personally, I, I don't do anything that, that that would allow me to have the type of, you know, mm -hmm. money to yeah. build a sound system <laughs> like that. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to play other people's songs. Got you. Okay. So then yeah. now you're getting, you're on Twinstar. Who, did you bring anybody Twinstar no. or who was on Twinstar? My, it was me by myself. Yeah. For, for, the, for the good while of it mm -hmm. he had uh one or two other selectors i think in jamaica and mm -hmm. in the states but here in canada i was the one who was dealing with okay and this time you and baba had split so you yeah so after studio mix he went where he did went, Baba? He, in? uh he was on his own for a bit he was doing like mix cds and stuff like yes, that but he plays yes. he plays super fresh now yes yeah so he ended up fresh you ended up twin star Okay, you build this song and stuff. So, so what was the game plan when you got Twin Star? Was it say, okay, now I'm ready to clash all these people I got out? Was it juggling? What was your intention to do with this song right here? There was really and truly no game plan. Mm -hmm. It was, I, I got, I was getting my dates same way. I get my juggling dates. You know, people see me when they see me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I was always doing like a residency somewhere where, you know, I'm there every Friday, every Saturday or whatever the case be. That, mm -hmm. that's, that's what I do. You know what I mean, so when dancers see me, them see me. 
for the most part. So mm-hmm. if I was getting my dates, whatever, whatever hardcore juggling, Polly used to link me for juggle ugly around a borderline. Yes. <laughs> like, if you weren't going to borderline for juggle ugly, like, yeah. you know, like from them time there. So me and him used to scrap the one, nah, them something there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Whoever used to go around there. So like, I, I, I do those, those type of events. I had no problem fight club mm-hmm. because twin star was a song it was it, it wasn't the like a studio mix that already had roots inside of the dances and stuff mm-hmm. so twin star you had to bring it so you were playing a lot of the outskirts to say you mm-hmm. weren't into the wherever you'd see the black reactions the military yeah, was, that. Uh, yeah. that wasn't really where you were no. at that time there it never was i mm-hmm. never really was mm-hmm. i never really was uh, one and two time you see me kind of cross over into that spot but i, I keep myself busy mm-hmm. elsewhere always kept myself busy elsewhere twin star did you clash on twin star or what was the deal when you when you were on twin star um a lot of hardcore juggling mm-hmm. um i did a fully loaded probably we did one fully loaded mm-hmm. up in uh, scarborough one year uh we did a modern warfare that was that was probably the big one that was that was the that was the dance word that make everybody be like, er? tell us about it. Um, okay, so we had originally booked uh, Mystic, mm-hmm. uh, Exile One from Montreal, Comtrax, mm-hmm. and Twinster. You know, we're like nobody in the know we could stay in a wheelie and crash some sound way. The power level. Mm-hmm. That was that was you know what I mean. We you know we're not trying to overstep our boundaries, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? So you know, so um, you know, leading up to the dance, there was you know a little fracas and fracas. Um, you know, Mystic ended up withdrawing from the event. Mm-hmm. Long story short, they tried to they tried to double their price yeah. at the last minute. And promoter said. Yeah, get out of here. Mm-hmm. And Exile One, uh, we still don't know why they never showed up, mm-hmm. but they canceled maybe two days before mm-hmm. the dance happened. So I think, or two or three days before they did. And uh, we ended up getting newbie. Okay, so then who was the only two that were left was Twin it was Star, Twin and, Star and Contracts. Okay. And so. we were able to get newbie to mm-hmm. step in on f- less than 48 hours I notice. Remember, like, Big him crazy. up. Crazy, yes. Big him up. God, there's a lot of sons in Toronto who would never do something like that. So big up newbie every freaking time. Mm-hmm. He, he stepped into that like a champ and it was a good night. Mm-hmm. Actually beat him from pillar to post. He won by one song in dub for dub. And yes, there's an audio for that too. So was there was there a trophy also or was just there was a trophy one? there was yeah. a trophy yeah mm-hmm. newbie played the card that because it was our dance yeah so he he played the card that oh you buy your own trophy and re, re, like you know just typical gimmicks he gimmicked all the, like I said probably one of the <laughs> smartest selectors in the city like mm-hmm. he's crafty as as hell yeah I mean very intelligent dude yeah. very very intelligent dude so he's able to work the crowd um you know when it was supposed to be Volker only ball about that too I was like dude you, you when you got the money we told you what the rules were mm-hmm. but he came into the dance and said me never know about the Volker <laughs> 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 when a new tune run <laughs> like, he's, he's, he's hilarious hilarious yeah. hilarious you know what I mean but um, it was one of those things where like once again audio don't lie the audio's out there if you listen about the audio we won the first round we won the second round when it came time to vote the third round mm-hmm. the host big up Fabo the host is like yeah, twin star good there yeah. <laughs> and, and they voted the next two sound and drop out they ended yeah. up dropping out contracts and sent me and me and newbie to, to to dub for dub yeah and it came down to the last song and he won after the last yeah. song and it took a dennis brown from newbie mm-hmm. to win the dance so so yeah and you would say that was in the clash arena that would have been the biggest for twin star at, at that the, time at that, ti- at that time yeah mm-hmm. and how long how long were you on twin star for Another five, six years, something like that. That's how long you're over there. I did, I did a few years well still. I, I don't, I, listen, man, 
I, I, there's only one song that I've played less than two years. Mm-hmm. We're, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> we're, listen, we're getting there. Cause remember, now we've been through the Black Melody journey, mm-hmm. got to studio mix that led to Twin Star. So, okay, cool. You did your clash and stuff, right? What song did you play next, and why did you end up leaving Twin Star to go play this other song? I ended up leaving Twin Star. I ended up leaving Twin Star. Kind of premature. Okay. P- P- Pisa and Twin more kicked off. And, you know, big up Twin. Right? <laughs> I call him an unruly drunk girl. Mm. Right? Yeah, I'm a virgin, but he, he can he can mm-hmm. definitely get on your last nerve mm-hmm. when he wants. So it was just one of those things needed a break. Right? It needed a break. It was just, you know, when you when you, you argue with your brother them. <laughs> so it kind of tell him to hit the bricks for a bit. Mm-hmm. And that's all it was. Is not not more than that, um, and after that, we're just on the road. Uh, <laughs> at one point, I had actually had a sit down with Slingshot uh, about King Turbo, and I was as shocked as anybody else when King Turbo walked into how uh, was it. When dance did nice, you remember when they used to bring the artist them? I think it was yes, Turbo, yes, yes. Fresh, Mighty Crown, Pies and Dot. When they were all bringing the all brother yeah. artists or something mm-hmm. to perform, and that was the night, the first night when anybody seen Ricky and the whole of them back together. So I was actually shocked because I had sat down with Slingshot maybe like a week before that, and we had actually discussed me even possibly, you know. So. That hap- that happened, and then I was like, okay, so that's not going to work out. Yeah. So I was like, all right, cool, no problem. Mm-hmm. Thought nothing of it. I uh, went to a dance out in St. Catharines, mm-hmm. and Polly was there. And Polly's like, yo, King Atani need an MC, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, hmm, King Atani. So I'm like, hmm, okay, didn't think nothing of it. Go into the washroom to go take a piss. <laughs> Walked into Phantom, mm-hmm. same time. I had no idea that he was there, mm-hmm. and yeah, that conversation happened, and and that's how you got to Atani. So, how long? What was the break between Twin Star and Atani? Mm, a few months again. Okay, so uh, you three you, three to six months. Okay, so you don't months. rush into these situations where you're just leaving tonight and by next week you're on to something else. You only, give yourself uh, only one time. Yeah. We're getting there. <laughs> We're getting there. You understand? Because now, bomb, Atani. So then you you seen Phantom that night there. What was the conversation like to say, okay, let's let's make this happen? It happened. Uh, I don't remember all the details, details, but uh, it was one of those things. I went and checked them. Uh, right out, right out the gate, I was given all the splits mm-hmm. again because mm-hmm. this is. You know, at this point, this is what I do now. Mm-hmm. So they handed over all the splits and, you know, there wasn't a lot to do over, but I had all creative control to, mm-hmm. you know, whatever I wanted to, to mess with. I could, mm-hmm. you know, did a little tweaking here and there or whatever, but big up Phantom. He's good people. Yeah. Because a Tani is a different type of song. I think out of every song. It's a rubber song. It's a rubber song. Out of every song that you played now, this is... A lot different than every other song top, we played before. Top heavy with vocals. Mm-hmm. It's not that they can't play DJs. They mm-hmm. have DJs, but they're top heavy with vocals. Mm-hmm. That's that's what they specialize they're from, in. They're from the 80s. Mm-hmm. Like they're, for, they're, they're foundation songs. Mm-hmm. So they, they have the Dennis Brown and Garnet Silk. They were cutting back then and stuff like that. So yeah, different song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was like probably at that point, I was, that was one of the bigger boxes I had gotten Like when it came on to like depth. Yeah, that was... Made already where you didn't have to go and say, okay, let's put this in here. This was basically, okay, we have the depth, here you go type of thing. Yeah. All right. Because this is a sound now that I think carried you to your biggest stage in your career. No, without a doubt. You know what I mean? Which is the two biggest stages, which was Rumble and World Clash. What was the journey like to get to Rumble and why did you guys even take Rumble in the first place? Um, Canada Rumble... Before I got on the sound, they had won a dance called Time to Shine. Yes. Um, from what I understand, one of the, I think the promoters were Randy and Jill. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the stipulations for winning the clash was you were supposed to be guaranteed a flyout to New York. Okay. Um, that flyout never transpired. Mm-hmm. 
So when Jill was doing the legwork for for Rumble, you know, she she was linking. I, she linked the sounds, and I remember. I'm sure a lot of sounds can can attest to this. They had a thing where they like they had a short list mm-hmm. and a long list. Mm-hmm. You know, like so. Are you interested? Yes or no? Okay, mm-hmm. we'll get back to you. So when they finally called us now, and you know, Phantom brought it to us, and I told I told Phantom, I was like, Yo, doesn't Jill owe you a dance? Mm-hmm. Play that card. So said, so done. Mm-hmm. And that's how we got on Rumble. Because she owed Atani a big dance. Mm-hmm. So that's how we got onto Canada Rumble. Never knew that one there. Smart move. It happens. Yeah. It, it, like, it was just there to be done. Like, I was like, play the card. Like, mm-hmm. you know, see what happens. And it, and it worked. Mm-hmm. I think we were the one sound that got on without any discussion with the big man up top. Mm. <laughs> we got we got on. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? So. What was the preparation like preparing for something like Rumble now? Because this is a totally different league now. Fully loaded are cool. All of these are stuff, even though it's some of the same sounds that you will be, that will be in the clash. But where you guys are heading to is a totally different ballgame. Mm. What was the preparation like for to get to Rumble? Um, Phantom's always cut in mm-hmm. so you know it was just a matter of you know i think we should go get a couple of this or a couple of that and he did mm-hmm. um then leading up to the dance it was kind of like all right junior make the crates <laughs> yeah okay you know so it's serato it's serato time so you know you know make the crates which is what i did mm-hmm. made the crates went through them you know for the most part you know i like if I'm putting it together, I'm going to do like time trials, see how they sound, how they flow, you know, stuff. I'm doing that from home. So I have an idea of how it's going to sound before we even, you know, get there. Mm-hmm. And the way a tiny bo- uh, the way a tiny box is set, you can kind of do that for the whole night because you know your box set different from why everybody else, you know, you really and truly, I think that night of Rumble, I probably only had to pull maybe four song, five song. Okay. When the night was done, just to say, okay, I yeah, that play already. But for the most part, Canada Rumble was preset crates. Uh, the only thing that, the only time there was any discussion was dub for dub. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that was the only time there was any real discussion. Like me and Pang kind of went back and forth on that. We fell behind in Chun for Chun to step a chase. Mm-hmm. That them time me and Lumba buck up again. So uh, we we had fallen behind, and then um, I remember at one point, Pong looks at me and he's like, "Yo, anyhow, we tie it. Mm-hmm. We're gonna play the simple Simon." Yeah, I'm like, "All right, cool, no problem." And that's how that happened. So that was big, big. That simple Simon, big, 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 mm-hmm. big tune. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? And then clearly, you guys. Well, not even clearly. If they don't know. You guys won the Rumble. So was it came down to Stepper Choice and King Atani? Yes. And then you guys beat them in tune for tune. Yes. All right, cool. Because as I get, I'd always call you and make fun of you. Say, yo, this is a sweep over your soul moment. Because if you look, <laughs> <laughs> there's a picture where you look like Luciana just <laughs> flashing your like sweep over my soul. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. That's the big say. So then, okay, now, how long was World Clash after Rumble this time here? Oh, man, I don't even remember. I know we had... Um, we had called the Undertaker in between. Well, you guys had clashed before. Yeah, we clashed like World a Clash. month. I think we clashed like a month or so, a couple of weeks before mm. World Clash. How did that go? Not well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. um, we did okay, mm-hmm. but, you know. Who we, was in that clash? Here? Stereo 5, Mystic, King Atani. Mm-hmm. So, Tree Song. And I think Mystic won the dance. Mm-hmm. So. That was on there. Okay, so you guys, Canada Rumble, Call the Undertaker, and then World Clash. Yeah. Okay, what was the preparation like for World Clash opposed to Actually, now I'd, a Rumble? Actually, I had done a juggling dance out in Edmonton that mm-hmm. I won. I won a trophy for that too. Okay. Still juggle. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah, I did. I, mm-hmm. I went out to Edmonton. Uh, I won a juggling trophy out there too mm-hmm. that same year. It was a good year. So what was the preparation like now to get to World Clash? Because now this is a totally different stage. You're playing with your peers when you're talking about Canada Rumble. When it's World Clash now, you're talking about international South. What was that like preparing for that there now? 
for me personally, it was just another clash. Mm-hmm. At this point, like I've clashed, you know, so much. It, 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 to me personally, I'm not really shook mm-hmm. by it. It's a big stage, yes, but it's just another clash. Mm-hmm. So it's just regular preparation, you know. Don't really do much outside of, you know, the normal thing. So. Who was the biggest threat that you guys were looking at say, we need to get this person out or these sounds right here? Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> everybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, just everybody for dead. There was no, mm-hmm. there was no, can't pick on anybody d- directly. And the way World Clash had been formatted by them time there, it was different Rumble winners. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I was going after any one specific song that everybody knew. It was just, it was that Rumble winner versus that Rumble winner versus that Rumble winner. So it was a different kind of format. Mm-hmm. It's no different than going into like a, a fully loaded up here. Yeah. So that's why I said it's just another clash. It was no, no real, yeah, yes, the platform is bigger. Mm-hmm. You know, the prize is bigger, but it's just another, you know, kind of microwave clash. So. Why do you think you guys didn't do as good in World Clash as you guys did in Rumble? Uh, oh, you smart. <laughs> 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 um, that was kind of like the, when things started to kind of deteriorate. Okay. There, um, you know, b- big up Garfield and big up a uh, big up Pong. For sure. I, I, you know what I mean? Like, I have nothing against them, but. For them style of play and for me style of play is, is really different. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's kind of difficult when you're going into clashes, like even in, even called The Undertaker included, where, you know, if you say make the crates before the dance and I make the crates mm-hmm. and I take my time and build them. And yes, I know you go into a dance and things change and, you know, you want to adjust on the fly. I get it. But when all of that stuff is still available. Yeah. And there's no real reason to change it. And yeah, I run me down for play Far East and Kochi. And I was like, nah, bro. Like, you have newer stuff in the box that need mm-hmm. to play. Like, you know, I understand the whole, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I'm not trying to play comfortable. I want to play, I want to, I want beats on song. I want to show them, say, we have songs. So, so it was trying to meet them halfway. It was that trying to meet them halfway thing where it was like, okay. You know, and it just, the conflict of how the two sounds them, or the, how the two selected them, like how like how I'm trying to select and they're trying to select. So I'm trying to meet them halfway, mm-hmm. and the final product just wasn't what it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I can't, I'm not, I'm not going to blame anybody, but that's what it, that's what it was. That's what happened. So it was at that point where I was, I'd known that that was an issue, mm-hmm. Um I live in Saga. Mm-hmm. Hamilton is where King Atani is from. And, you know, for those in the city or for those who don't know, that's about a 40-minute drive. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I was reaching every dance, every juggling dance, every party before the man them will live out there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that, yeah, you know, I think that alone speaks volume. You know what I mean? So it was one of those things where I, I, I eventually I went to Phantom. I was like, listen, I need to bring my own selector that that I can work with. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Cause, cause what's going on here is not working. And I had voiced my opinion a few times. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I still tried to be the team player. You know what I mean? I didn't, you know, I didn't rock the boat too much. Uh, in my four or five years that I was there, I... I only played one or two dances with another member. Okay. So I was playing I was I was playing by myself. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it, it was one of those things like give me my own selector and let me work with the only time everybody else came around is when it was clash. Mm-hmm. And then it's Junior make the crates. And then when we actually get to the dances, no, let's play this instead. And yeah. it's like, bro, like yeah, you know, pick mm-hmm. a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so yeah. so that's what I was dealing with around there. And, and mm-hmm. it, it got to the point where I was like, okay. Um, once again, I was doing, I had my, re- I had a residency that I had actually at that time I had just started. Okay. So I was busy every Friday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, and the only time I would take a night off from there is if the song was playing. I would still, you know, I would still mm-hmm. make sure I'm there or whatever the case be. 
but for the most part, yeah, it, it was me. <laughs> so, so it, it got to the it got to that point where I was like, okay, if this is what it's going to be, then not it's not work. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so remember, if you keep in score, I don't even want to count casino in this. We're going to go from black melody That's fine. to studio mix to ta- to Atani. No, to Twin Star yeah. three to King Atani. Yeah, you didn't stop there though. No. Okay. Cool. Atani, you guys started after World Clash because, again, even with that, the pressure of a World Clash is a lot of pressure, too. So if the team is shaky going in you're, and you don't win, you're definitely going to be more shaky coming out. Mm. Get that. Cool. When did you decide now to leave Atani and where do you end up? Um, I parted ways. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember how all of that went, but uh, parted ways and... Now I'm saying to myself, I'm good. I'm done. Mm-hmm. I got, I, I, I'm like, not playing nobody else. Mm-hmm. I'm like, forget it. I'm not doing it. I was already juggling every week. Like I, I had, like I said, I, I have my residency that's always running. So mm-hmm. it's not like, I found a way to make money off of this. Mm-hmm. So I was all right. You know what I mean? Okay. If I don't play in, in you know, the latest all white or cut off jeans and <laughs> Air Force <laughs> Ones dance, like, like it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Whatever. So um, they're doing my thing and I get a call. Mm-hmm. Pick up Chemist, Superflex. Mm. Uh, Chemist, uh, we, we link, you know, we talk every so often or whatever the case be. And he links me and he's like, yo, they want barbecue. Yo, Father Star, all he needs is an MC. Man, I'm sung. He said, Steeny and Reaction got that work that night. I was like, Okay. Mm-hmm. So I call Blacks. I'm like, yo, brother, well gone. And he's like, yo, you are the ones. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yeah. So he's like, yo, I'll bring you around there. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm like, all right, cool. So, you know, whatever day passed, and I said, I'll link you when I have time to go. And then the day that I link him, he was busy. So I was like, all right, no, no worries. Just hopped in my car, drove down to Eglinton. I went and introduced myself. Mm-hmm. I walked into his shop. Um, he was literally, as I'm walking into the shop, he was opening up his laptop. He was about to play a song for somebody yeah. who was there, whatever the case be. And it's like, he seen me, kind of smirked, and I kind of smirked back, and I walked in. And I was like, you know, say I don't come to talk to you about, right? I was there for about maybe four hours. Mm-hmm. Yes, I had walked with my own hard drive. Uh, and I left with the song the same day. And this is now the big, bad, legendary African star. Yes. Yeah. So it wasn't even, to get to African star, it wasn't even nothing too crazy. It was just happenstance to happenstance to walk in to here we are. Okay. When did you, what year did you get to African star? I want to say 2019. Okay, so this is just right just, before no, just, COVID. Yeah. 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 yeah, right before, yeah, right before COVID, mm-hmm. yes. African star now, okay, pre-COVID. Do you actually get to do anything while on African star? Because now, as I said, this is 2019. We're about to head into 2020. This is just probably a year, mm. year and a half. What were some of the moves you made on African star at that time? Now? Um... Well, I started off by ripping off the balance. So he had no problem giving me his CDs. Mm-hmm. He had songs that still were on CD that needed to be transferred. He had stuff that was on DAT that needed to be transferred. He had stuff that was on plate that needed to be transferred. There were songs that needed to be re-recorded and turned up and all that. I took care of all of that. Myself and Big Show, mm-hmm. we took care of all of that. Um, <laughs> we took care of all of that and some... Um, then, uh, first red flag, I had a barbecue Mm -hmm. to do and, um, mega eclipse, Mm -hmm. he was doing a barbecue and, you know, I went around there and this is now I officially have the sound, you know, I had made my my little, this is why I don't even like doing these things, but I made a little Facebook Mm-hmm. Post saying I had the song and yada yada. That's the one time I'd ever done it. So I, you know, everybody, ha- everybody know I have the song. Now. Okay, mm-hmm. step out on the road now and go out and doing a regular juggling event, regular juggling event. Um, playing my forty five them. Then at some point the juggling there was you know there was a rhythm that I had on dub. Mm-hmm. I 
played the juggling and dub and I went back into my 45. Then by the time my round was done, I looked down on my phone for the star calling me. Oh, me here say, oh, I wrote a play my song them. <laughs> yeah. So I was kind of like, okay. You know, maybe just, you know, give him some time to warm up to the fact that cause I'm taking the consideration too. He mm-hmm. ain't had nobody but himself play his song in the last 20 years. Mm-hmm. It's his baby. It's his life work. And I get that. I respect that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I also know what I bring to the table. Fair enough. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I know the difference between going out that road and beating out all my song them as opposed to I'm juggling. You know, station identification. Ain't nothing wrong with a one or two song here or there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, then um, there was a, I did a, Big Up Noble Works. They have their Connected, their Wednesday night. So, I've been giving them energy from Twin Star days. I've, I've been going from, they were at Crawford, from they were at Blind Tiger, then they moved to Socialite, and I've been to all of those places and played mm-hmm. for them no matter what. So I got, you know, got the call, went down. So the flyer comes out, and I hear, oh, man, I like play for them, boy. They, you know, them, them man, they love used people. I'm like, that's not really the relationship I have with mm-hmm. these these dudes. Like, you know, I've been, and I'm trying to explain to him, you know, I've been, no matter where they are, I always give them energy. You know, oh, well, if it's African Star and the Flyer, people are going to think that it's me that's going to be there. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, but you do know that you've you've given us the green night to say, say we are African Star too. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he, he kind of felt like we were taking over and taking away mm-hmm. from him his thing. You know what I mean? So then after that now, um, we had... I was booked to do the early juggling for Trilogy. Uh, Trilogy was super fresh, soul supreme, Shashamani. Yes. So I was booked to do the early one for that. So now it's like, like okay, I know I have juggling dubs, mm-hmm. but do I want to play them? <laughs> or <laughs> like now I'm second guessing myself. Like I'm going out in public and it's like I'm supposedly playing this song and not, like I don't even know if I'm allowed to play the song them or not. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay. I remember I squeezed off like one song. I was playing for like an hour and I literally played like one song and it was like mm-hmm. quick in, quick out. And I was like, you know, mm-hmm. just. Uh, never had no issue booking the clash with Twin Tower because we, we had dropped the flyer. We were supposed to clash Twin Tower. I, you know, I said, you're going to get paid this much, yada, yada, yada. He didn't have a problem with that. Uh, <laughs> then. Uh, like anytime we got called to do like, a, cause now we're in COVID. Mm-hmm. So the clash with Twin Tower gets postponed due to COVID. Now everybody is online doing, you know, their things. So I'm getting a one and two calls. I'm getting a one and two calls from a one and two platforms. And, you know, they're like, they're reaching out to me. They want me to, to follow. And I'm like, now I'm telling everybody, well, I don't know what's going really on the, in- the online thing, ka, you know, ka, right. I, that, that's what I'm, I've mm-hmm. now been forced to tell everybody now mm-hmm. to save face. You know I mean, oh, I'm in a Phoenix. So now it's kind of like, you know, I'm kind of getting a food box out of my mouth now because, you know, this is where it's at now. Mm-hmm. Everybody is online. I'm not saying that I'm going to play on every single platform that offers, but I, I think I have enough common sense to know, mm-hmm. say, if I play on that platform, I'm going to reach a certain set of people. If I play mm-hmm. on that platform, I'm going to reach a certain set of people. I, I, I think I, I've been around the, enough to know which one's which to get and whatnot. It. So, you know, I'm, I'm getting the calls and I'm letting him know. And then as, you know, each time it was, no, no, we're not really depend on I'm like, all right, cool. Then I get a voice note from Polly. Mm-hmm. I already know what Polly's linking me for. <laughs> I see the I see the voice note on my phone, mm-hmm. and I didn't even open it. Mm-hmm. I didn't even listen to the voice. I I already know what he's linking me for. I let the man know say you know say Polly linked me for Jogger Ugly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm, okay, all right, fine. I think maybe two weeks later, two weeks pass or three weeks pass. I just did my regular. Go check. I used to go check Star every week around him shop. Mm-hmm. Go check him. And walk in now. And he's like, oh, you know, say Polly link me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, really? Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, we're going to do Joe Ugly Panda. I'm like, 
Okay. So the whole year mm-hmm. from I had done Mega's barbecue and he had said to me, Oh, yo, Taroda play me song them. He wasn't giving me any song. He'd been voicing dubs yeah. the whole year. Mm-hmm. He'd been voicing. You know, when I go to check him, he'd be like, he'd play me the voice. Oh, yeah, I voiced, I voiced this this week. I'm like, oh, all right. He's yeah. like, you don't need them, yeah. Car, you know. I'm like, okay. All right. I'm like, all right. So now, so now I'm, just, I'm just watching. I'm just watching the flex. I'm watching yeah. the flex. You know, I'm also paying attention to the fact that he's voicing these dubs and I don't hear my name in none of the song them. So I'm like, I'm like, all right, cool. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. So while all this is going on, I still have my 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 residency that I'm playing, Big Show, who mm-hmm. I had brought with me. He was doing his weddings and he had his stuff. So me and him were taking our sweet time and you know, every week we'd do, all right, yo, let's go half on this and cut our one song. Mm-hmm. Cut our one song. Cut our one song. And, and that's what we were just doing for just for shits and giggles. Yeah, I mean. Um so when Juggle Ugly finally gets booked now, mm-hmm. I go to him, I was like, you do know that you're going to have to free up those songs that you've been vicing for the last year. And then there's that big uncomfortable pause. Mm-hmm. So it was like pulling teeth, but I ended up getting them from him maybe two or three days before Juggle Ugly actually happened. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we we had a little meeting of words where he, you know, now I now I understand what his feeling is. He now he's saying, you know, me feel like I'm not take over my son, and me feel like, you know, you know, he didn't want Big Show to play because he's like, we don't need Big Show. I can mix. Yeah. He wants to physically be the one behind the sound, like a theme So I'm like, I'm like, all right, cool. So now that I know that this is what the issue is. So we, you know, I think that happened on the Thursday. So I'm like, come check me at my house on Sunday. Mm-hmm. So he comes and he checks me at my house now. And he brought his laptop and, you know, we, 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 we talked. You know, I, I, I smoothed out things. You know, I took his laptop. I plugged his laptop into my console, make sure that his laptop reads because I see what's going on now. Mm-hmm. So it's like, all right, your laptop works. All right, cool. I'm going to bring my console down so you don't have to do no heavy lifting. Mm-hmm. And you forward and you plug in your laptop. And so you get down to Jogger Ugly now, the following night. And, um, you know, I went early, set up, string up, whatever the case be. And he reached maybe maybe half an hour, 40 minutes after me, and he reaches. I'm like, go plug in your laptop. Go plug in your laptop. Mm-hmm. We didn't get the green light. Mm-hmm. We didn't actually know that we were gonna actually mash our works till about till less than ten minutes before they went on the air. Wow! For Juggle Ugly. Uh, beforehand, I had asked Polly. I said, "Polly, what's the format?" And he's like, "You're gonna play a thirty-minute round, and you're gonna play a twenty-minute round." I was like, mm-hmm. "All right." So I prepared two folders for for that. And, and, you know, the night took a turn, big up sniper. Yeah. And then, you know, we, we did our thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, no, enough people were running jokes because, you know, Star was standing over mm-hmm. me looking very vigilant that night. And, you know, I, I see in the comments, you know, some ads are like, yo, the man, I'm going to get fired, the man. And it wasn't really nothing about that. It was just more that the man didn't want to play him sound. Yeah. He wanted to play his sound. It's nothing more than that. Mm-hmm. It, Nobody else had physically play, played that sound in over 20 years until that moment on Juggle Ugly. So, yeah, damn right he's going to keep a close eye on, mm-hmm. on his things. You know what I mean? But me personally, I'm going to really operate under them, them jurisdiction. Mm-hmm. I, I think my rap sheet speaks for itself, and I don't want a man to say I'm cocky or bossy or arrogant. My resume reads for itself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So there's, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll be, you know, I'll be a team player and I'll be complacent only to a certain point. Fair enough. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I, I'll, I'll follow the line order up to, up to a certain point. Mm-hmm. But now it's gotten to the point where, okay, I can't even take a date. Mm-hmm. I can't even play. I can't do nothing online every time. 
we take a date, you'd rather we use our own personal name. It's like, okay, but you, you never said this from the get-go. That, Got you. You know what I mean? If you had said that you just want me to MC for you mm -hmm. and then everything else you do as Junior D, that's what should have been discussed. But don't say, yeah, and then give me your song them and then let me rip off your plates them and rip off your dots and rip off your CDs and then it's a problem the second I put the name on the flyer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, pick one. So um, Big Show had done another uh, he was going to do a little online something he had taken a little online juggling or whatever and then you know at at this point now mm -hmm. we're like okay let's wait for it so sure enough at that point we hadn't heard from star in like two weeks okay no call to check in no nothing like we just it, it was it had already gone where it was going so he calls and he's like oh missy missy went up on a flyer with a bag of sound Okay, I'll talk to Big Show. <laughs> so that was that. So that next convo with him, it was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely definitely not going to put up with this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, they, there's no disrespect. Like, you know, it's the elder. It's, it's a theme song. I'm not fighting no man for his And thing. you seem to get that part there. It's just, I get, you understand where he's coming from but that wasn't the deal when you walked in and i guess that's where well that's i presented i present i presented a package i presented myself mm -hmm. and big show as a package i said you now have two experienced selectors a mc and a shooter mm -hmm. who if you put your songs in their hands like we can get stuff done you know i booked a clash i cleaned up your box i did you know we we're taking our time and even cutting a one two song and mm -hmm. like we're ready to go like we're doing what we're doing you know what i mean and it's you know we're kind of getting a push the push back the whole time so and and again you being through this business for so long yeah i'm pretty sure by this time your patients are a little bit thinner than they were when you got to black melody or even a studio mix type of thing yeah you well understand? at this at this point now i i can see it glaring you know i gave i gave it time to you know to work itself out, mm -hmm. you know. I, I'm sure, you know. I think I did enough to show that your your sound's in good hands. Mm -hmm. Wasn't having it. Mm -hmm. He wants to play his song, so um, there he had had a, a after uh, after Juggle Ugly. We had done and he had taken another booking mm -hmm. for How Am I Go Manage, and for How Am I Go Manage, he brought his console, mm -hmm. um, which I knew was going to happen this time. So now, now I kind of went into petty mode. So I, I, I go there now. I'm like, all right, do what you do. Mm -hmm. Do what you do. Let's see what, let's see what you got. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you got. You say, you say nobody can shoot your song the way you do. All right, mm -hmm. let's do this. Um, for anybody who operates Serato, like, not even the 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 shift left or shift right. Mm -hmm. He's not doing that. He's dragging the song from the bottom up to the player that he's played. Like, no disrespect to the man. You know what I mean? No mm -hmm. disrespect to the man. But yeah, you know I mean, like he doesn't even understand the basic functions mm -hmm. of the thing. I can't put myself out there like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking lumps for you because you want to be the man on your thing. Like, if that's the case, here you go. Mm -hmm. Play a song, I'm good. Manners and respect. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that was that was the final straw for me. And then on top of that, after that mm -hmm. had happened, the final straw for me was when I, the next flyer that I seen was supposed to be one with Ricky Turbo and King Vower. I was like, nah, boss, you're on your own for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not going to allow me to actually play the sound mm -hmm. and I dance with them sound there, yeah. nah, man, I'm good. Do what you do. I mean, so yeah, that was that was the thing. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get out of here before that reach, cause mm -hmm. I have no way in hell I'm I'm leaving myself open to that mm -hmm. at that point. And now, Junior D, this is song number five, my yes. brother. Yes, yes, yes. Five, but okay, it seems like the other four. You were there for a good bit, except for Black Melody, but that's understandable. You're just thinking. Studio makes you put in good time. Atani, you put in good time, and Twin Star, you put in good time. It seems like you had the right intention with African Star, 
but it was just not the place for you. You understand? To do what you think you could have done best, especially you know what you did with these other songs, you just figured. So you cut your losses very quickly on that one there. Well, when he finally gave me the... He giving me a hard drive because, like I said, I I ripped off songs off a plate, off a of dat, off a of CD. I done all of that and I had repackaged everything mm-hmm. so that it can be put back on Serato. So he gave me a hard drive. He said, "Put it on here." So I put it on there. But when I got the hard drive, I started looking through it. I was like, "Oh, I found like two or three split songs." Mm-hmm. Uh, I was like, "Oh," so I went, took those, mixed them down. I said, "Here you go." Mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, that that would sound better on this rhythm." Fly it over on the rhythm. Here you go. Like, man didn't even budge. <laughs> he didn't even budge. So I'm like, okay, like I've I've tried to show this gentleman say me can do everything. Yeah. He, he, just he, he just he wants to play his song. So yeah. I just yeah. Just one of those situations. Just one of those situations. That brings us up to basically right now, because we're still in COVID right now. Yeah. What are you doing sound wise right now, Tony? Well, while all of this was going on with African Star, mm-hmm. everybody knows that um, me and Pisa are always, we've always maintained our friendship. We've always been good. He was actually the person who booked the Twin Tower African Star Clash. Okay. Because talking to him as a virgin and as a promoter, he was like, yeah, you need a two dance to, to roll out your thing? I got you. Mm-hmm. And he was going to give me those, those platforms to mm-hmm. get African Star rolling. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I get those one, two dance. Somebody must call me after those first two dance. You know what I mean? So that was the intention. Mm-hmm. That was the whole intention. There was a game plan there. It just, it never came to fruition. Um, so while all this was going on, you know, me and him talk almost every day. So mm-hmm. he plays Twin Star. So he, he, the whole time he's like, come home. <laughs> come home. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, um, yeah, when it got to the point where, because me and him had spoken not long after I had gotten that phone call about Missy Mini and Panaflya. So I was like, you never believe what just happened. Da, 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 da. He's like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> if you know pizza, you know, you know, that's how he talks. He's like, yo. <laughs> He's like, yo. So, um, Needless to say, he he, he had went back to Twin and he's mm-hmm. like, you know, Twin, you know, I'm going to drive back for your MC, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I got a phone call from Unruly Twin before I had even made my intentions known that I was leaving African Star. Mm-hmm. It was just one of those things. That's the first time that that ever happened like that. Mm-hmm. But it was just one of those things where it's like, listen, I, I pick your poison. You know, the lesser of two evils. Mm-hmm. Um, and for anybody who says why Twin Star, that's my biggest body of work. I've seen bigger stages with Studio Mix and King Atani, yes, but um, I take pride in the fact that I put that the box together piece by piece, for the most part, mm-hmm. by myself. Big up the owner, you know what I mean? Big up Unruly Twin. But even he'll tell you. You know what I mean? Black's done the place, did time on Twin Star. And at that one point, he seen me on the road and I had to come and shake my hand and say, yeah. youth. <laughs> yeah, I mean? So, like, mm-hmm. it's one of those things. Like, if anybody understands that part, like, mm-hmm. of the building a song and the craft of, you know, putting sang pan rhythm and building rhythm string and finding a rhythm where nobody else now fuck with and mm-hmm. put some sang pan it and stuff like that, like, that was the one place where I was able to do that the most. I was given the most freedom. Like when Sangha Vice, it's twins like, yo, so I have so-and-so. What are we vicing? What really mm-hmm. me want them on? Like, you can't ask for nothing more than that. So you figure it's like, okay, this is home. This is where you feel more comfortable. Yes, you did bigger things on several of the other songs we're on. But this one here is where you feel more comfortable, where you feel that I could take this to the highest levels that it could course, go. Of course. There was a lot of unfinished business there as well. Mm-hmm. And the fact that, you know, 
big up Pisa. And big up Big Show because he's there with me too. That, yeah. but big Show's got to be probably one of the most loyal dudes <laughs> ever. Yeah. Y'all don't know, but he's been by my side from I was on King Atani. Mm-hmm. He helped me select for World Clash and Canada Rumble when they, when they said Junior build around them build yeah. to create them when they're telling me build to create them it's me and Big Show that was sitting down and doing that together so big yeah. up Big Show enough people don't even know them something there for sure you know what I mean that's, that's big pick and, him up yeah and then um, you know Pisa is my next dog you know what I mean so it's kind of like I got my boys with me so mm-hmm. and I got a song that that made for me mm-hmm. built for me by me so okay five songs do you think in today's market you playing five different songs means anything in a class market where somebody could hear hey you moved around or whatever does That's that still mean anything today uh only if they make a custom to talk about it for that particular night mm-hmm. but uh i'd more want to be remembered for what i did Mm-hmm. on those each each sound individually because I think I have a story to be told on each sound. Mm-hmm. I did something different depending on what was going on in the business or the industry or my personal life mm-hmm. for that matter. You know what I mean? Would dictate, you know, I think that story speaks louder, you know? When I played a tiny, yeah, I went to World Clash. Yeah, mm-hmm. I did Canada Rumble. I did those things when I was playing Studio Mix. Yeah, I, I clashed Black Cat. I did Fully Loaded. I did those things. Like, you know, I... Even something that we never talk about today, but a bus enough song in mm-hmm. the city too. Yeah, you know I mean, like like mm-hmm. specific dubs that are in people's boxes. That yeah, Judah D make them run go cut that one. Yeah. Day. Like you know, what I mean, any song in Toronto. For I'll give one example. Any song in Toronto that has Sizzler's Ultimate Hustler in mm-hmm. their dub box. I'll t- I'll take credit for that. This is where me and you I always argue about that. Me and you always argue about that. <laughs> this we we may have cut it the same time. I played it first. Okay, okay. You, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. Okay, I'm gonna take when back we off when my, we cla- when we clashed at fitness yes, that year, I and I remember that, Scott, yes, and I remember you yes, clipped yes. the two of them. You clipped the Sizzler, and, and you the clipped cartel. the, the cartel. Yes, and I remember, man. I remember Scott here. Look at me. He's like, don't drop. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. When we did when when we did Ultimate Hustler, I'll tell you the God honest truth. When we did Ultimate Hustler, um, I was at home. Mm-hmm. I was watching BT. Cause BT was was running early two thousand, mm-hmm. and I remember I'm hearing and I'm like, wait, Sizzler. Mm-hmm. I pick up the phone same time. I'm like, yo, Father Bix. He's like, yeah, all right, leave it with me. Mm-hmm. Um, they tracked down Sizzler. He was in New York with Ninja Kid at the time. Yes. He was with Ninja Kid at mm-hmm. the time. And it vice I done one in New York. And we had it. I remember when we had it. And I laughed. Remember Lyric DVD? Yeah, of course. So when they did, they had an episode where it was featuring Sizzler. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I watched it, I laughed because mm-hmm. they followed Sizzler to his dub session. <laughs> <laughs> And every single song yeah. that matters in Toronto, mm-hmm. yeah, them two. I don't even have to call a name. Yeah, yeah them two was cutting Ultimate Hustle and up. Mm-hmm. I felt good. Yeah. Because I was like, yeah, me do that. Yeah, I mean, so. It was just one of those things. How I know what you're talking about is true. Because you say you cut yours in New York. We cut ours in Trinidad. There you go. You understand? And so it wasn't, this wasn't clearly, okay, It's he's in Jamaica. Let's go cut where we're cutting. These specific, these were requests that were sent specifically. Yeah. As you said, that was New York. We were Trinidad. So, okay, you might have had it one day. I might have had it 12 <laughs> hours before. What's so, Okay, yeah. that one is very debatable. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, but played it first, I would have to give it to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was that. There was... um. Assassin, we are bad from desert clocks and diamond socks, pinstripe. Mm-hmm. I played that before everybody in Toronto. Um, Junior Kelly, mm-hmm. receive. Yes. As soon as you said that, Zone One just went into Nor- my mind. Nor- Norrisman, Norrisman, home and away. Yeah. Like all of these songs, mm-hmm. I'm a force. Yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, mm-hmm. I heard King Turbo with receive. Mm-hmm. What me bossy. Fair enough. You're back home now, Twin Star. 
is this your last song? It better be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, honestly, honestly, I, I like the last mm. two songs. I said, that's it. Yeah. I'm done. I'm not doing this no more. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and even when, like I said, the only reason it happened the way it did is because I'm venting to my brethren who plays my mm. old song. He's like, man, just come home. <laughs> that's the only reason it happened the yeah. way that it did. Mm-hmm. But I was literally ready to flip the bird at everything. and Because yeah. like I said, I, I don't really care if I play on the all white or the all black mm-hmm. or the Air Force and cut off jeans party. I, I could care less. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that everybody in the city will know if they want to be honest with themselves is if me and them buck up on a juggling dance, they know that I'm going to be right there with them. Yeah. Because when I step up there, I can I can do it. Mm-hmm. I just do it when, when I'm called upon it, but I don't run it down. So so your thing is two different things. There's Junior D, the DJ slash selector, and then there's Junior D playing on Twin Start, Junior D on African Start, Junior D mm. on Studio Mix. So there's two different, you have two different personalities. So your residents are under Junior D, DJ Junior D, or mm. whatever the case is. Yeah. So you're never, if you Twin Star for whatever reason doesn't work out, you would never leave music altogether. You just might leave always, sound. Uh, yeah, business. just sound. Sound, sound. sound is just one of those things that I love. It's, my, it's a hobby. Everybody got a hobby that they like. Some mm-hmm. people collect cards. Some people collect coins. Mm-hmm. Like, I play sound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, there's nobody in my family who is surprised or shocked at mm-hmm. the fact that I'm doing what I do. Yeah. Right now, everybody knows. Yeah, junior mm-hmm. music. Yeah, okay. Clearly, I did my I did my uncle's wedding, um, my mother's brother's wedding. I was probably in like grade seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he had his stuff. Like, he he just knew that when I used to go to his house, that's like I said, you want to shut me up. He put yeah. me in front of the turntables, give me the records, and turn on the song and let me do. I'll mm-hmm. play records all day. That was that was my thing. Crazy. So when he got married, but two of my uncles, I I was the DJ for their weddings, mm-hmm. and you're what. 13, 12, 13, yeah. 14 when you're in grade 7 or 8. That's why. So I've been been doing it from them times. So. That's wild. Got a couple more before I get you out of here. Yeah, man. What's your Canadian Rushmore? Which five sounds or selectors would you put on that mountain there, Canadian-wise? Selectors or MCs? Hmm, a good one. MCs. Uh, MCs for Toronto. Mm-hmm. Five. Mm-hmm. Okay, Black's reaction. Mm-hmm. He can command the crowd. He can juggle. He can clash. Uh, and he can do it without cussing. Mm-hmm. You know what? You're right about that, too. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put him at one. Mm-hmm. Um. Steeny, no explanation needed. No explanation needed. Um, and I'll put the last three as clashes, mm-hmm. clash MCs. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna include myself. I feel that I could, I can hang with anybody okay. here in the city. Who vex vex? There's a reason why you haven't seen me and certain people clash. Mm-hmm. I'll just say that. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, but um. For Clash MCs, Polly, mm-hmm. Ranger. <sighs> I like Lombaji. Yeah. Lomba's bad. That's I, like, that's, I like Stepa Chai. Stepa Chai is a Stepa Chai, Stepa Chai's a badass song. Mm-hmm. Ichi One and Lomba is a sick ass mm-hmm. team. Like to me, they're they're almost like that Canadian version of Mark and Squinchy. Yeah. Like they're just bad. Itchy knows Itchy still Itchy's mixes. Sick. You see what I'm itchy saying? is he's still sick. Itchy one is one of the ba- he's itchy's bad. I yeah. buck up itchy like mm-hmm. outside a clash. Yeah. He, he would sick with yeah, it. Man, bad. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, so yeah, that's for MCs. That's your top five rushmore. Okay, cool. You didn't put yourself in it. Cool. Who would you say would give you the biggest competition out of those five there? And who do you think would be the easiest kill? <laughs> Um, there is no easy kill. Mm-hmm. Politically correct answer, but we'll go with it. There is no easy kill. Um, 
okay, politically correct. There is no easy kill, but I feel like I could kill all of them. How's that? Given the given given the given the given the given the given the the opportunity, mm-hmm. the the fair chance where there's not the uh, you know there's no bias. I put it put it this way: neutral ground. Okay. Catch any of them on neutral ground, I feel like I could probably beat them still mm-hmm. okay. on, a, on a good day. Who would give you the most competition? Then? Depends on the dance. Mm-hmm. Everybody bad and they want to win. Out of those names that we're, we're not doing it. We're not doing this today, you know. But <laughs> somebody that you know, it's okay. The good dance, right place, the right good, side the, of the, the, for, for right now, for what's mm-hmm. going on in the city, mm-hmm. the hardest vice right now is yeah. Polly. Yeah. Fair enough. Hardest vice right now. There's there's a reason why certain people haven't clashed him either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. I say Polly because me and Polly have gone at it multiple times. Mm-hmm. Juggling, clash, hardcore juggling. Me and him buck up everywhere. Mm-hmm. And it's always nice. There have been dances where he shell it and get our money pull up and I walk mm-hmm. in right after him and you think, see the dance done and I forward back and get couple right mm-hmm. back right back at it. You know what I mean? So, like, Polly, he's one. I rate dudes that can clash and juggle. Mm-hmm. And he's one, he's one of them that he probably doesn't get enough respect. There's a reason why, like, like I said, Toronto's very political. So there, there, there are certain people who you don't see on certain dances. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason why you don't see certain people on certain dances. Who are vex, can vex when I say that. Fox is, it is what it is. Okay. You know what I mean? So, what would a dance with you, a roots man, or you and Ranger look like? We juggled once. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, I think it was 2014. Mm-hmm. I was playing Twin Star. Uh, it was a dance out in St. Catharines. And it was just me and them. Uh, and the resident song, I think, Temperature Rising. Mm-hmm. Big up profane them. Um, I recorded that dance. Okay. I recorded that dance. Um, and the only reason I don't say nothing about the dance is because that audio, I took the recorder. Mm-hmm. I went to Jamaica and gave it to Sizzla. <laughs> Sizzla have the audio <laughs> of that dance. Um, but I will say this. Mm-hmm. Big up Stallion. Mm-hmm. Those were two wicked rounds of hip-hop he played that night. My juggling that night was 75% 45, 25% dub plate mm-hmm. with a few subliminals thrown in here and there. Uh, everybody knows, you know, me and Ranger, you know, we're not, you know there, I don't think there's any real beef, beef, but me not like that sound and then not like me neither. And I just, why? Only God knows. Yeah, I mean, there was never a real incident where, you know, I think because I ribbed them for probably not taking a dance with me back in the day. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I know I ribbed them. I know I do. Mm-hmm. But that's the only real reason why he would have me up. Mm-hmm. Cause me and him never really in a nothing like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I asked you for a clash. You said no, and I made fun of you for it. And that's that's all it was. It was nothing more than that. Mm-hmm. Rate them. Bad song. Bad song. Got it. <clears throat> One thing here. You spoke about something earlier. I think you guys got eliminated for they thought you would play back a song. That would have been fully loaded. Yes. 2021. Does playing back songs really matter right now? Depends on the dance. Mm-hmm. Um, depends if you get caught. Mm-hmm. There's a play back and then there's a play better. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I've, I've been a victim of both. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I've played back song and I've also played back a song that sounded better than the <laughs> one that you played. So, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? They're, they're, it all depends on the dance. It all depends on the MC. If the MC can sway back you know, the crowd in there, you know what I mean? Cause even when me and Nubi were clashing, that Modern Warfare dance, mm-hmm. there was a time where he tried to stop me in the middle. Oh, let me play that already. I was like, but mine's so better. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, mm-hmm. it's whatever, you know what I mean? Like, it all depends on the situation. It all depends on the situation. Fair enough. What's left for you, Junior D, to do in this business that he hasn't done, that you still, you need to scratch your itch. You're still... 
either a song you have to kill, somewhere you got to go. What's left for Junior D in this business right now? Well, what I have left on the table is actually something that's in the works right now, mm -hmm. which is Africa and the UK. Okay. Yeah, um, Pisa's not playing, so mm -hmm. once outside open, we'll be busy. Mm -hmm. you know, we're just waiting for, you know, we all know the world that we live in now with COVID and this, that, and the other. So outside, I take it time and I open up. So, you know, there's stuff that's tentatively in the works right now, mm -hmm. you know, behind the scenes and whatnot. So we'll be doing road. Definitely be doing road. I want to go see some places that I haven't been to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I traveled with the sound prior. I've traveled. You know what I mean? I've I've seen all of Canada. I've been, you know, I've been here and there. I've done, you know, Trinidad. I've been Jamaica. I played Jamaica a couple of times. But like I, I've played. It's not that, you know, it's not that I haven't traveled. Mm -hmm. You know, every, everybody go pump playing. You yeah. know what I mean? So sometimes we just don't make the Facebook posts or the Instagram posts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Moving silence and violence, you know? Yeah, I mean, so that that that's it. When when you think we're not moving, we're still moving. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, two before I get you out of here, you're back on Twinster now. As soon as the place fully opens up, who has the dead? One Canadian song, one international song. <clears throat> who has to take a dead? Oh <laughs> uh, man, I. I could just be nice and just, oh, man, jeez. You really making me do that? 100%. Um, Twin Star and King Shine clashed in Bermuda, mm -hmm. but it wasn't me. So me and Jimmy Aberdeen, I wouldn't mind taking on that dance again mm -hmm. with me and him squaring off. That, that, would, that would be a nice dance. Same thing for... Um, Next friend of mine, Dapa. Yeah. Innocent. Innocent. Next badass selector. Like, I rate those dudes. Like, you know what I mean? Um, Canadian? Yeah. All of them. Nah, bro. I'm not everybody, letting, everybody, I'm not, everybody, I'm not for the, everybody for that. But here's, a, here's, a, here's what it is. I'm not letting you get away with the everybody. Here's, a, here, here's what One it is. One person in particular. A, One person in particular has to dead. Sorry, Ranger. Okay. Fair enough. I have to. Like, if, if you're going to make me say it, then I'll say that. Mm -hmm. That's just that one dance that I think should have happened a long time ago. It never happened. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, there's a few songs he needs to crash. I think he still needs to crash Super Fresh. I think he still needs to crash Polly. You know what I mean? That's just my personal opinion. Please mm -hmm. don't kill me. You know what I mean? You know, but I know I know he's, he's done his thing. He's tried his road. So, mm -hmm. you know, big him up. Nah, tell no man how to govern them thing, you know? But, Fair enough. But if I had a wish list, yeah. Mm -hmm. but I'd That's like it right there. I'd like to see them dance there. All right. Five big songs you've been on. What would you say would be your biggest regret? Why you, where you think you probably moved too quick instead of just trying to sort it out? Or do you even have a regret? No regrets. Mm -hmm. I have no regrets. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I always think of what I'm, if I have to pick one, I'd probably say Twin Star only because this is where I am now. Mm -hmm. I came back. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? I, I, I knew what it was, but I don't really have no regrets. Yeah. I do. I do my thing regardless. You know, the sun's still going to come out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Junior D, you know how long I wanted to make this conversation happen? I know. You link me. <laughs> You know, you know, long, but I said, you know what? Nothing before it's time. Definitely wanted to sit down and talk to somebody like you because we spoke to the Rangers, we spoke to the Polys, we spoke to so many people, and your name comes up every time in this conversation. I mean, it's Bridget from a long time. We've been linking for a people million years. People don't know I, I, yeah. I have my passport to come yeah. to the East. I've been <laughs> coming to the East. I've been mm -hmm. in Malvern, Big Up Scorpio, and I've been checking him around at Galloway mm -hmm. for years. Decades. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, uh, Scarborough is, I like the East. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we did Modern Warfare at Hickory House. They, that was by design. Mm -hmm. We could have easily done that dance in the West. I was like, nah. Mm -hmm. 
I like Scarborough. I love Scarborough. A yeah. little bit more neutral. It doesn't have, there's not too many agendas. Scarborough different from the West. The East different from the West. Mm-hmm. They give respect where respect is due in the East mm-hmm. compared to the West. The West is very political, but the East is, you know, they're, they're, they're a little more real with the thing. Yeah. So I've always enjoyed coming out here from like HHMS days, Jimmy Jack's days, um, Incline. Like I, I used to free, I used to frequent, I used to frequent all of those places. I used to play all those places. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, I used to come out there from, from, from Black Melody days. We were coming out there. You know what I mean? So for sure. Any big ups, any shout outs, anything right now, the floor is yours. Anything you want to say or if there's even something on your mind you want to say, the floor is yours 100% right now pick up every song i've ever played on i don't really have nothing bad to say about any of them you know i know there's reasons why i left or whatever the case be but i've never really walked the road and say oh that man that pussy i've never done that to nobody Mm -hmm. despite whatever happened so you know pick up every song they've all played a role in my personal story so Mm -hmm. you know i'd be a fool to say anything negative about any of them so big them all up um Speak up everybody in the industry, man. I, I know I, I know that I get a, a bad rap for being, uh, I think they say, opinionated. <laughs> I speak my mind. Um, That's what you sure did today. Yeah, I speak my mind. You know what I mean? I, I, I'll say what the next man's afraid to say because they don't want the, the backlash. And mm-hmm. if you don't like me because I said it, tough crackers, mm-hmm. it's still true. You know I mean? Truth it, is undefeated. You can't beat the truth. Mm-hmm. So yeah, 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 I mean, not everybody. I'm not gonna sit here and 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 tell you what you want here because that's the the politically correct thing to say. No, if I think you're trash, you're trash. <laughs> if I think you only bad in your area, then you only bad in your area. Mm-hmm. You know, who the cap fit making weird. So where could they check you out online? See what you have coming up. They want to book you or anything? DJ Junior, DJ Junior, the selector on all platforms. Facebook, Instagram, and all of that. So, Junior the Selector. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. No, I'm not hard to find. I keep telling people I've had the same number for over 24 years. Like, you want to find me, find me. I, enough people can't say that. I've that had means, the same number. That means you most likely have a 416 yes. number. Yes. You understand? I've had a 416 number the whole entire life. I, I got my cell phone when you still needed a credit card to get a <laughs> cell phone. They get, they get cell phone to any anybody now. Yeah. Sign a piece of paper to hand over a phone. But them time that you still needed a credit card mm-hmm. to get a phone. So I've had that and I've had the same number the whole mm-hmm. time. So do I check your trust me? I know you have so many things coming up. And again, I like your honesty. Even though sometimes you're trying to be politically correct by saying, Yo, Junior D, give me the goods. And you said, Okay, see ya. It is what it is, right? <laughs> it is what it is. Like I said, I know I know my my personal opinion. I, I know I rub a lot of people the wrong way. Mm-hmm. That's the reputation that I've had. Sir Aries, boss. Yes, me. Yo, keep it as it is. Fire, fire sign, fire you. Junior D, thank you so very much man, as I respect, for coming through and doing it's this. It's definitely an honor, man. Mm-hmm. It's definitely an honor to be here. Boss, you, you're one of the warriors that put your mark on the business you understand that's all i want to be remembered for mm-hmm. a lot of people want to jump to the oh i'm jumping from sound to sound no fuck that mm-hmm. talk about the work when we actually do that's each why time i couldn't think there i could we couldn't have a balanced conversation where okay we're going to talk about what you did but clearly the elephant in the room is you played five different songs so i want to know from your mouth your mind why you did and what you think about it and you answered it and we're good you understand yeah man Thank you so much, my brother. Man, as I respect. Let me give your outro and get you out here because this conversation, <laughs> one for the books. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle, and this has been another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast, and we are out. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com. <laughs>